Okay. Now uh, we will uh, start our next part, uh, and uh, I think uh, you have already seen our the training schedule. The next part of the today is the experiment about uh, the IGP futures and uh, the BGP futures. Uh, uh, I think you know it is about uh, the just uh, uh, the two lessons you have uh, learned before. And uh, after we learn these two experiments, uh, we will go to another lesson. It is about uh, the network uh, uh, security technologies. And uh, okay, for, for the first part of the next lesson is the IGP routing technologies. So in this experiment, we will learn about the advanced IGP features and advanced PGP features. And I think you have already know all the IGP features that uh, we learned just in last lesson. So okay, for these two experiments, we just uh, to say what we will do in the experiment. And uh, we just need to do a basic, basic, uh, 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 basic understanding about this experiment. Okay, okay. let's say the first experiment, it is uh, it about the IGP features. And uh, we can see this, this uh, topologies. In this topology, we will divide uh, the whole topology to three parts. The first part is the OSPF area two, and the second part is the OSPF area one, and uh, the last part is the SS. Okay, so we have two IGP domains. The first is OSPF, and the next one is SS. Okay, so we will do some basic configurations, such as the interconnection interface, uh, and the IP interface, and uh, maybe we, we will run the OSPF and uh, run the SIS. Okay, this is, is the basic uh, configurations. So for the basic configurations, we don't need to, need to just uh, have a deep, uh, uh, deep understanding, okay? We just need to see what we will do in this experiment, okay? The first part, uh, okay, in this OSPF area two, we have two Link, you can see that. Page three, two, three, one. Wait a moment, uh, which part? That is page uh, 32. Which one is the uh, part 32? Oh, wait a moment. Okay, okay. Now, can you uh, see the screen? I think you should. Now you can see the screen, right? Okay. Okay. I just uh, I forget to start the screen screen share. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Now the restart. Okay. Okay, now we will learn about the two experiment uh, and the two experiment uh, I think you have learned the knowledge uh, just in the two last lessons. Okay, the first uh, experiment is about the HP features and the second one is the BGP features. Okay, and uh, I think it is not a very hard experiment. It is just uh, uh, just a, you can just is a combination about uh, the just uh, features, okay. And the first features, it, the first experiment is about the advanced IGP feature, okay. And uh, this, this is a topology. In this topology, so we will we have three uh, parts. The first part is the OSPF area one, and the second uh, area is the OSPF area one, okay. And the last one is the SIS domain, okay. So now we can say we have the OSPF, we have the SIS, so we can do some features, okay. Uh, I think now you can't uh, download this lab guide because uh, it is not the last versions and uh, we didn't uh, release it normally. And uh, but I think uh, after we normally, uh, I mean the official uh, launch it, you can download the lab guide in our uh, official website. Okay, but now I think uh, it is possible for you to get the lab guide. Okay. And uh, okay, we have the different areas, so we can do some IGP features. So for example, so we can do the IPFR, and we can do the BFD, and uh, maybe we can see how to the OSPF HTTP to uh, 
generate as uh, default routers. Okay, so in this experiment, we we'll, uh, we just uh, to see what we will do in this live guide. Okay, we will not say the every basic uh, detail. Okay. Okay, in this experiment, okay, the first thing is in the OSP of area zero, okay, we have the we have two paths from the PE2 to P1. Okay, we can just use the path follow the P2, P1, and then we can go to the P1. Okay. And the next part, I think uh, next path I think you should know it is P2 and P2 and P1. Okay. So we have one requirement, it is the bandwidth between the two paths, it is different, okay. The path just uh, along with the P2 and P1, it is higher than that uh, P2, okay, and P1, okay. So we need to just adjust or we need to configure the OSPF interface cost so that we can just uh, let the traffic uh, go to, uh, go to the, from the P2 to, uh, to the P1. To P1, okay, we can go to uh, optimal pass. Okay, and uh, the next uh, experiment, next uh, feature is we need to do a OSPF IPFR, okay, just in the PE2. You just know that in PE2 we have two equal paths, but, uh, 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 but in this experiment, in the first part, we see that we have already adjusted the OSPF interface cost. So, we need it. and that part is we can use the IPFR to generate a backup path. Okay, and then is the we need to configure the OSPF BFD. Okay, we need to do this. But maybe if you have experiment, you will find that in this experiment, it is a little difficult to do a perfect OSPF BFD. I mean the. Uh, the experiment just because you know, if you wanted to see how OSPF works, okay, maybe you need to switch just, uh, I mean, in the two routers, you can just uh, put one switch into this, okay, and uh, maybe you can use this switch to uh, just to make, uh, for example, the, for the PE2, you can let the interface, the physical interface, the uh, this, this state is up, but you, you should know that, for example, so in this part, in this switch, we can just shut down the interface. So the OSPF packet cannot send to SPR, I mean the PE1. And actually the OSPF uh, PI is down, okay. But, and, but, but BFD, okay, this function, it can just dedicate the, in, the link is not work normally, okay. But in this experiment, we don't have the switch. So we will use another way to just to see how BFD works. Okay, wait a moment. And uh, okay, and uh, and then the next part is okay. We will do uh, root filtering. Okay, we will do root filtering on the P one. Okay, we show that. Uh, the P1, this root it is uh, ABR, okay. So we will do a uh, root filters in this device. We will limit uh, the root that uh, will just, uh, that will enter the OSPF area zero from the OSPF area one, okay. Just uh, do these functions in the P1. And uh, the, next, the next part, or it is that's the last part is, it is a simple feature. You should know that it is ATT bit, just, uh, just we need to generate uh, all SIS uh, different routers. Uh, I think it is uh, we need to do this functions in the PE3 and we will generate default routers to the PE4. And uh, in the PE4, we will just uh, ob observe how the default route is carried by the RSP. Okay. Now let's look at the configuration roadmap. The first part is the basic configuration. Okay, it is configure the device IP address, and the second one is the configure the OSPF as we planned, and then it is the SIS. Okay, we need to establish OSPF peer and SSPR just as we planned, and then we will do some features. The first features is we need to adjust the OSPF cost value. Okay, right, and. Uh, then we need to enable OSPF IPFR, okay, on the PE2, so we can see a backup router or a backup path will be generated and it will be 
load into the root tables, okay? And then the next part is we need to do the BFG, BFG okay, these features, and you will see how do I uh, just uh, let uh, show you the BFT, it, uh, how it works, but we don't have a switch, so I use it another way. Okay, and the and then the next part is we will create a look back to interface with the same address on the P2 and the P2, okay. It should be in the P2 and uh, P2, okay. And then we will active the OSPF on the interface, it means the look back to interface, okay. And then we will check if the equal, co uh, equal cost routers will exist in the P1's ring tables, okay. Then we will limit the equal cost routers into the ones, okay. And then we will create the loopback three on the piece uh, and activity on the step, okay. And then we will need to do uh, inter area root filtering, okay. And then the last part is the SRS, okay, we will generate a uh, default router, okay. Now let's just look at uh, what, how do we do the experiment, okay. The first part is the basic uh, configurations. It is about uh, the device name and about uh, the IP address about the interface, so we can just, uh, just uh, skip this part, okay. And then the next part is the config OSPF, okay. It means, uh, okay, we will configure the OSPF on the, showing that we will configure OSPF on the P1, okay, P2, PE, uh, P1, P2, and uh, P3, okay. Okay, we will configure the OSPF, okay, the for, and uh, we just uh, need to do the, the first thing is we need to configure the OSPF, it process number is once, and we need to configure its root IDs. And uh, for now, I mm, don't want to explain why its IP address is this, okay. We have all, we have our tables, and in these tables, uh, if you can, you, you can see it's an experiment, okay, we have a table, and uh, in this table, uh, I've already, we have already planned every device, it's root, uh, look back zero IP interface, and we will use this interface IP address to action us the root ID, okay. And uh, we need to enable the OSPF, okay, on all the interface include the look back zero, so all the interconnection interface, okay, on the OSPLP, uh, on the P1, P2, P3, and uh, P1, and uh, P2, okay. But uh, you should know that uh, the P1, it, it is the ABR, okay. And uh, then, okay, we should know that after we finish all the, the configurations, we need to check if the OSPF configuration works uh, normally, okay. We can use the display OSPF peer brief, this command uh, to see, okay, if the, the, the uh, if the uh, relationship is uh, uh, established normally, okay. And then we, I think, uh, we need to check the OSPF routers is normally, sir. But I think uh, now this uh, version, okay, this format is, uh, not uh, normally okay, so it doesn't matter. So okay, okay, but uh, we need to check if the OSP all the OSPF routers is um, learned uh, normally okay. And then the next part is config the SIS okay. You should know that if wa we want to config the SIS, we need to design the process ID, the net IDs okay. So we have a plan. You just uh, config the SIS okay, just as we planned okay, and. Uh, after we finish this configuration, so okay, we shall need to check that the SI is PS, right? And uh, we need to check the SI is root, right? Okay. And then we will see that what we need to do is, okay. The first things we have said before, so we need to uh, address the OSPF interface cost, okay? And we need to enable OSPF IPF, right? Okay. The first things between we address the OSPF cost, we need to see how uh, how is the OSPF interface looks like. I mean, for the router, it is destination it is to this uh, this router, to, to this IP address, okay. And we will find that we have two 
routers, okay, and it is a uh, cross routers, okay, and it's the uh, next uh, hop is the P1 and P2. I mean, in this part, uh, it is from the P2, okay, to the P1, okay. And then the next thing we need to do is in the P2, we need to adjust the OSPF cost, okay, we adjust the cost to cost two, okay. And it shows that for this interface, it is a gigabit Arsenite interface, okay. So by default, we know that for this uh, interface, the its OSPF cost its value should be one, okay. So now for this interface, its OSPF cost is larger than before, okay, but so you should know that for now, the root, the OSPF routers that's needed to this IP address, it will, it will be calculated to another path, okay, right? So you can use this command, display play OSPF routing table, okay? And uh, we can just uh, uh, follow the IP address and the mask we can see is now, it only have one next help, it doesn't have two next help, okay? Okay, this is the first features. Okay, the another feature it is the IP OSPF FR. Okay, we can see that. Okay, it is the we can use this command. Okay, we can enter the OSPF process wheel and uh, we use this command FRR. Okay, and then we use this, this command loop free automated. Okay, then it will generate a backup routers. Okay, so. Now we can see it in the OSPF routing tables. Okay, we can use this command display OSPF routing. Okay, we can follow the destination IP address and its mask. Okay, you can see that besides the next hop, okay, we can see another, it is the backup next hop. And we, you can see the next hop and the backup interface. It is the backup auto interface. Okay, and uh, it is type is the FLA, it means loop free alternative. Okay, it is this abbreviation for the loop free alternative, okay, link node. So what it means, it means if the primary path it doesn't work, then maybe the basic interface doesn't. Okay, you do need to calculate the path. We know in the normal process, if the OSPF dedicate any Interface, interface uh, errors or interface bounds, okay. It needed to calculate a new path or a new routers by the existing LSL or it should be SPF, right? It, uh, but now we have already the backup next hop. So if it, the OSPF process is dedicated any interface bounds, okay, the backup in, uh, next hop, it will work just in uh, just uh, uh, as soon as po uh, possible. It means we can just uh, reduce the process, uh, this process, okay, the calculated process, okay. We can just uh, to save a little, a little time. But uh, maybe for you, maybe for engineers, you will think maybe this time is too short. But uh, for the device, you know, even a waste of times, okay, the loose, loose packet, the loose packet or the loose traffic, it will be huge. Okay, and then, Okay, let's look at it. It is the OSPF and uh, BFD. Okay, we can do. We can see how the BF, uh, how the BFD to uh, accelerate the OSPF just the peer relationship dedicated during the um, maybe maybe it is the physical interface error. Okay, okay. The first thing is it, it is impossible. So we need to enable the BFD, okay, on all the device, okay. And then we need to enable the BFD in the OSPF process, okay. You can use this command, BFD or interface enable. If you use, use this uh, command, okay, it means all the OSPF interface, it will enable the BFD functions just uh, by itself, okay, by the device itself. And uh, actually, I so, mean, for this command, for this command, OSPF BFD enable in the interface in the wheel, in the interface wheels, and OSPF BFD min mime, uh, it means the send in the wheel, and this it means the receive in the wheels. Okay, this command actually you don't need to type this command. Okay, just because if you use this command, 
all the parameters about the BFDs in the interface, it will automatically generate by this command, okay? But this command is just to show you how to uh, configure the OSPF uh, on, on just uh, in the interface wheels if you want to configure by yourself, okay? Okay, and then we will check the if the OSPF sessions is work normally, just uh, we should know that, okay, the BFD session, we have already associated it with the OSPFD process, right? Okay, you can see that all the BFD set, it is, it is up, okay. It is up, okay, it is up, it is up, okay. So the problem is how do we do, how do we just uh, to generate a uh, link down, okay? You can see that in our this, uh, in this topology, if you want to generate a uh, link down, okay, you don't need, need the OSPF, okay? You don't need to use BFD, sorry. Uh, you don't need to use the BFD. The OSPF, the, it, the process itself can dedicate the interface link down, right? The, I mean, the interface, if, if it is a physical link down or administrator down, for example, you can share down this interface, okay? You don't need to the, you don't need BFD. The OSPFD itself can check the uh, link down, okay, by itself. So how to let the OSPF works and uh, how to let the BFD works. Okay, so we use, we use this method, okay, you can see that, okay, we can use the traffic policy, okay. If you know the, how the BFD packet looks like, okay, you need, you know the, uh, you know the, I mean the destination, destination port, okay, destination port, and uh, you know how, uh, which uh, uh, transmission protocol it uses, for example, TCP or the, or the UDP, okay. You can use ACL just uh, to match the BFD packet, okay, and then you can use the traffic policy. We can use the traffic policy, okay. We can use the traffic class classifier to match the BFD packet, okay. And then, okay, we can use the traffic policy just uh, in this interface, the P2, okay. The P2, this interface, okay. We can just uh, to binding, we can just uh, to bind, uh, okay. The traffic policy just uh, in the inbound uh, directions, okay. So what will happen? So you can, you will see that all the BFD packets that send by the PE2 and designated to the PE2, okay. The PE2, it will not receive the BFD packet, okay. So it will, what it will happen? You will find the BFD station, okay, the BFD station will done. So what will happen for the OSPF sessions? Anyone can tell me. If I use this with, okay, now the PE2 can't receive any BFD packet that receive that send by the PU1. If it means the OSPFD, the OSPF peer relationship will done as soon as possible. Anyone can tell me if it, if it will, if things will like that, okay. I think uh, for, for most people, including me, okay, We'll think if the, we have already associated the OSPF and the BFD, okay, they will get together if the BFD session done, and then the OSPF session will done just uh, in the same time, right? But uh, I think this experiment will tell you the working mechanism is not like that, okay? Okay, we can see how, what will happen in the next, okay? Now we have already used the traffic policy, okay? So we can see that for this BFD session, it have already done, and the down region is the control de uh, dedication time experiment. Okay, you should know that, just because I c the P for the PE2, it can receive the BFD packet, okay? But if we check, check what, okay? But if you, you try, if you try to check uh, why the OSPF peer is still existing, so you will find that, okay, all the OSPF peer now, they still 
in the full seat. It doesn't down. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't uh, go down. Okay, go down. Okay. So why will things will like that? Okay. So now we should understand. Okay. If we okay, if we configure the OSPF, okay, uh, the BFD, we will configure in the OSPF all the interface wheels. Okay. After the BFD session done, okay, and uh, the OSPF will not. Uh, just to do the same actions. I mean, it will try to shut down the peer. Okay, it will not try it. It actually, actually, the OSPF it, the process will try to dedicate if its peer is working normally. How to dedicate? Okay, it will send the OSPF hello packet just in the just immediately. Okay, and then it will try to Okay, it will try to change the data interview, okay, to uh, just a little times. For example, so two seconds or one second, okay. It means I will send it, if the, the, the BFD uh, process notified me, or I mean notified OSPF process, okay, the, or the BFD session instance, okay, OSPF process will send a hello packet to its peers, okay, and then it will, it will check if its peer will send uh, it is uh, it a uh, hello packet just for example in one second or two second but uh, the exactly times okay the second i don't know so just because all the device it doesn't uh, see the real times okay i just know it is a one short times okay and if the ospf okay the ospf come to receive the hello packet from its peers okay and then the OSPF process will sync. Okay, it's peer, it's done. So, in this uh, experiment, what we do, we just uh, filter the BFD packet. We doesn't filter the OSPF packet, right? So, how do we do? Okay, so we can just uh, to do these things in the ACL. So we just do and add another rule. In these rules, we will try to uh, match the OSPF packet. Okay. Okay, and then we will find that, okay. So the OSPF is peer state is not normally, so okay, it is start, it start, it is not the full state, okay. Okay, that is about this part, okay. It is about the OSPF and the BFT, okay. How to, how do they work together, so okay. The next part is the OSPF root limitations, okay. We we have already seen that we will create uh, the same interface. Okay, the look back to okay on the P two and the P two. Okay, and uh, we will configure is the IP address to the same IP address. Okay, and then we will check if we can see the just uh, the equal equal cost equal cost pass. Okay, on the on the P one. Okay, we see that. Okay, we have already created two interfaces. Okay. On the P1 and the P2, okay, and uh, we configure the the IP address to the same, okay, and then we, I think you will find that if we check the OSPF root tables on the P1, okay, on this device, you will see two, okay, load balance routers, okay, and now we can try to this command uh, maximum load balance one, okay, and then you try if you want if you try to check the OSPF root tables will find that, okay. Now we only have one router designated to the look back to this interface is uh, address, right? Okay, so and uh, about this command, I think you should know that uh, the, how to select the best uh, uh, loading balance uh, routers if you have um, so many uh, pass to the uh, to the one destinations. Okay, it will follow the rules. Okay, the first is the root priorities. Okay, it means the root with a lower priorities is selected for the load balance. But you should know that in our uh, in our scenarios, okay, all the routers, I mean all the two routers, okay, they are always PF, so they have the same root priorities. Okay, and uh, the next one is the interface index. It means uh, you should know that all the routers it ha it has the uh, output interface, okay, 
and the interface it has uh, uh, numbers okay for example so the interface one interface two so okay if okay it, it will see that okay the root with the largest interface index will be selected okay or uh, is the loading balance routers okay and uh, the next one is if if okay the output interface is the same they and then the device it will try to compare the next hop at the address okay and uh, which one will be selected as the loading balance pass okay it is the root with the largest ip address okay so just like uh, let's see our scenarios okay the routers they are they both are the OSPF, pair okay so they have the same priorities and uh, but you should that in our experiment okay for the p1 okay it has two output interface and this interface it, it is obviously okay have uh, have a, a similar uh, in interface index okay but for this one it its uh, interface index is much uh, it is not much it is just uh, large a little okay so this interface okay will be selected okay and uh, this routers okay this routers okay the router in the in and its interface is uh, uh, this interface okay it will be selected as the loading balance interface just because we have already used the command to limit it. the loading balance interface the router only can exist one in the ip routing table okay okay for the next one is another simple features it just is the default routers okay and you should know that for the commander okay it is very simple it is just one commander okay just is the default router device is always okay and we have already we need to set the router is levels okay and the level we set it to the level one and level two okay and uh, we can see that we just use one thing okay how the lsp just carry the routers okay you can see that this att bit okay okay this is just the first experiment about the sgp features okay and you i think you will find that it just uh, you can just think it is the uh, combination okay about just uh, various uh smell uh sgp features and maybe some features you will use the in your variables okay and uh, this is the first experiment okay and uh, the next experiment it is about the bgp features okay and uh, this feature or i mean this uh experiment maybe will be a little more complex than the first ones but uh, we just need to learn which which things we do in this experiment okay just because we have and we have so many things to need to learn so for this experiment okay i just uh, i we think uh, we just need to have a brief look about what we do okay so we can i can i think we can just uh, to say the just the introductions about ex experiment okay so now let's look at the topologies okay the topology is the, we have three or oh, it should be uh six routers okay and uh, the this the uh those three routers okay they function as the backbone routers okay they will run the igp the okay, ipgp uh ipgp protocols okay and uh, for those three routers p1 p3 and p1 they will function as the branches device okay and this the p1 it is function as the hq routers okay and what we will do in this experiment okay you will find that okay uh we need to do the okay we will create different uh, look back interface on the p1 p3 and p2 just uh, to simulate the TMN users, okay, and uh, then we will try to use the community filter, as pass filters. Uh, this these uh, features we will use use features. Uh, try to uh, limit the root uh, the root delivery, okay, and then we will use this uh, this function. I mean the ORF function, okay. These features 
we will use this uh, function as try to use, try to control the root transmission, okay? Okay, now let's look at the configuration root mappers, okay? And I think uh, if you see root maps, you will know what we do in the, in the experiment, okay? The first thing is the basic configuration, it is about the device IP address, okay? And uh, the next part is the OSPF, okay? We have already said in this experiment, we have a backbone address, okay? And we need to run the BGP protocols, but you should know that, uh, and, uh, ending, and uh, I think in uh, ending real network, okay, the real network, all the uh, BGP protocols, okay, it is based on the IGP protocols, okay, so we will use the OSPF to function as the IGP protocols, okay, to construction the underlying network, okay. And uh, what we will do, okay, the first feature it have already occurred, okay, the first one is the GTSM, okay, I think you should know that, okay, it is just uh, another function like uh, the EBGP hop limited, okay, but uh, it is different, okay, different functions, okay. And then the second uh, features is the BGP authentication, okay. And then what we will do is, okay, and then we will configure IBGPPS, okay, just in the backbone networks, okay. And uh, we, we have already done that here. We will use one RR, okay, just uh, to simplify the, the configurations, okay. And um, in the R device, okay, we will use the peer group, these functions, just to reduce the configurations, okay. And uh, maybe the configurations in this experiment, it, it will not uh, be too much, but in the real, net, uh, in the real, uh, real network, okay, if you have a uh, real backbone networks, okay, in the RR device, okay, you use the peer group, okay, it can be much, uh, I mean, the efficient, uh, efficiency, okay. And uh, then the next uh, uh, part is the, we need to create a lookback interface, okay? We need to configure, okay? And uh, then, okay, we need to configure the root policy, okay? We will use the root policies to add community values, okay? How to use it? We can just use the community values, okay? Just to mark the originated AS, okay? Why? Do, why do this? Okay, just because in the next part, okay, we will use the routing policies, okay, to control the route that we received. How to control? We can use the AS pass filter, okay. In this part, we will use the community, we will use the root policies, okay, to add the community values, okay. In this part, we will use the AS pass filter, okay. And in the next part, we will use the OF functions, okay. Now I think you should do that. What we will do in this experiment? Okay, and then we just uh, to have a brief look. Brief, okay, brief. What we what we configured? Okay, for the basic device configurations and the OSPF configurations, I think uh, we don't need to look it uh, so carefully. Okay, and we just look at what we do. Okay, the first uh, feature features I think you should know that. Okay, it is is. Uh, BGP authentications and uh, another part is the GTSM, okay. Maybe, I don't know if you know that, what is the difference between the GTSM and uh, the B UBGP hover limited, okay. You will find that uh, the function of uh, the, 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 it not looks like they are doing the same things, but what is the difference, okay. Actually, it is very simple. So the difference is, uh, the eBGP hope limited, okay, it doesn't uh, will limit it, uh, the BGP package that you received, it means if anyone want to, maybe it just that guys, okay, it want to try to just the construction uh, some packet, some BGP packet, okay, to you, and uh, it send it to you, okay, and, uh, but you know, but you only want to establish BG, uh, BGP, eBGP direct uh, uh, PRs, with the director, director, director device, okay. So this, this command, it will work, okay, just because you will send a B, EBGP, uh, I mean the B, 
uh, you will send a BGP packet as a response. But the response packet, it will not be delivered to the hacker. Why? Why? Just because for this packet, its default IPTTL is once. Okay. So you will find that at last, the, you will not establish the BGP pair with the hacker, right? But you still receive the packet, you still process this packet, okay? It is another way of the waste of the device's uh, uh, memory and uh, the calculating abilities, right? So why could we just uh, drop the packet when we received the packet? So how do we do that, okay? That is the GTSM, okay? We can use this with TTS hops. It, what it means? It means if I receive a BGP packet and the BGP packet is IP source IP address is the 10.0.6.6, okay? I will check if its IP TTL is larger than this value. So actually, I think uh, this value in this uh, experiment, it is not uh, set to uh meaningful values just because if you cite the uh, the value okay the value to these values i think uh, it just doesn't work okay and uh, then another part about uh, about uh, this experiment is we will use the peer group okay we can use the peer group so just uh, to like uh, to light uh, the configurations uh, more community okay and uh, then the next part is we will create, okay, we, uh, we have already said, we will create uh, the loopback one and the loopback two interface on those, on the branch routers and uh, the HQ routers, okay, just to try to function as, as uh, community users. And then, okay, we will network all the routers, okay, into the BGP, okay. And then what we will do, and then we need to do the community filters, okay, community filters, okay. Okay, what we will do is, okay, we will use the IP prefix, okay, these functions to try to try to match the routers, okay. And then we will use the root policies, okay, just to apply community values, okay. So you, you can see that now we have already just to let the BGP router carry its origin as as values, okay? And then what we will do is, okay, we have already used these functions to let the root carry its origin nettering as, okay, as value. And then we will use the root policy to control the root transmissions. Okay, how to control this, okay? We can use the community filters, okay? We can reuse. And then, okay, we can use this root policies, okay. And uh, by this, uh, by this, uh, by this uh, uh, configurations, okay, we can to just limit the router that we, which one we can learn, okay. And uh, the next one is the ORF, okay. The ORF is another function, so it is, it can, and it's, uh, its aim is to limit it as the root that you can lend, but it is a little different. How it, what is the different? The different things is for you, okay, you will tell your uh, peers which routers, which, uh, uh, which routers you want to receive or which routers you don't want to receive, okay. You can send it to your peers, okay. And for your peers, okay, it will receive, okay, it will receive uh receive the messages that you send okay so you appear okay it will you we know that the bgp uses the update packet to transmit okay the routers okay when it sent the bgp update packet to you okay it will it will filter okay it will filter the routers okay that you tell you uh you tell it before okay so what is the benefit okay you can just uh, try to think it okay for example, so for the P1, okay, for the P1, okay, we, we know that if we use the root policies, okay, you will root uh, the root policies, okay. Actually, okay, the root have already 
received by the P1, but it just doesn't calculate the root, okay? It, it, and it will not put the root into its BGP routing tables, but it have a database. In this database, it will store all the root that it received. So you, you maybe, if you have uh, some experiments, you, you will know that, okay? Any root that you store, okay? It will just, uh, uh, it, it, it will use your memories, okay? So if you want to work more efficiently, okay? Or just save your memories, okay? You can just, uh, you just need to, don't need to receive the root, okay? Just use the OI functions, okay? You use the OI functions to tell your peers uh, which route you doesn't, you doesn't want to receive, it, okay? And then, okay, in the packet, in the update packet, okay, in the, that P1 send to P, or P2 send to P1, okay? It will not include these routers, okay? So for the P1, okay, it can save the memory, okay? Okay, it is the first part. Uh, first part about uh, the experiment. Okay, it is the IPv4 routing technologies. Okay, and uh, you should know that. Okay, I think uh, uh, after we finish this part. Okay, after we finish the IPv4 routing technology experiment. Okay, we have another lesson. This lesson is the network security technologies. Okay. Maybe some of you guys will be similar, or maybe you will be similar about this this part. This part just because it is still some uh, features. Maybe these features you will you have already used it before. But uh, I think maybe, but now we have added some new uh, features about uh, uh, about the technologies. Okay, it is not. Uh, only about uh, the network, I mean the traditional network device, okay. We have added some uh, some knowledge, some, some technologies about uh, the firewall. So maybe, so if you are interested in the firewalls, okay, some maybe you can create it here. Okay, now it is the, okay, maybe we can take, uh, 10 minutes for rest. Okay. Okay.
Okay, now, uh, well, let's continue. Okay, now let's take another lesson. Okay, its name is the Network Security Technologies. Okay, one moment. I need to check which one I'm screen. Okay, now let's look at the forward. Uh, now we should know that as net technologies or what we use on the network, um, we should know that uh, uh, you can see it in everywhere, every place, okay. And uh, but uh, network tech uh, it is all it is just uh, attack often occurs, okay. For example, so, uh, the attacks are based on the AIP, okay, and the DHCP is okay. By use the AIP attacks, okay, and the DHCP attacks, maybe we can just uh, to do a uh, main in the middle attack, okay. And uh, okay, so we should know that uh, such attacks cause uh, authorized the users a failure to access network resource and uh, threatens okay, network information security, okay. So in the situations, uh, okay, I think that switching security become increasingly important. And uh, I think uh, for you guys, you can know that uh, this part, it is still talking about uh, the traditional the lib two, okay, security is okay. And uh, on the network of large and mid-sized enterprise, okay, few are usually deployed in hot standby mode to issue that standby firewall can smoothly take over service of the active firewall. Once the active firewall fails, okay, issuing a survey continually, okay. The widget system features allows a physical firewall to be logically divided into multiple independent widget systems. Okay, so you can find that in this part we are not talking about uh, the basic firewall principles. Okay, you you will find that we are talking about uh, two firewall features. Okay, the first feature is the hold standby. Okay, the first uh, the first part we are talking about. Uh, the hold standby technologies about the firewall. And uh, I think if you know this these technologies, okay, you will find that for different vendors, okay, maybe you will be familiar with the checkpoint, uh, the quota, okay, and uh, sorry, I just didn't know uh, all the another vendor, okay, you will find that different uh, vendors have different hold standby technologies. So what is the Hold standby te technologies of Huawei. Okay, it is. is uh, I think maybe you should know that two key uh, key keyword. The first one is the VGMP, and uh, the second one is the HRP. Okay. In this uh, session, we will just uh, learn the basic principles about the HRP. What is HRP? How HRP? What uh, can we uh, HRP? And in which scenarios we will use the HIP, okay? And um, the and that part is the which system, okay? The which system that you can just think it is the which machine, okay? Which uh, or which machine, okay? If you know the, for example, the, the cloud network, okay, or the data center networkers, okay, you will know that uh, the which systems or the VM, okay, it is uh, the best code. Wait a moment, it should be the path, okay. It is the best code technologies of the stars, okay. The survey as a survey, oh, okay. You should know that, you know that, you know that we have the path, okay. Stars, okay. We should know that, okay. We, for example, in the cloud or the DC, okay, we, for the different uh, rent, okay, or the tenant, okay, we will provide uh, the okay, the just uh, the separate uh, fail wall, okay, or load balance, okay, or for example, so, or and other device, okay, and uh, how to achieve this, okay. Maybe you can use the real which machine, I mean, use the which machine, which machine to uh, implement uh, the VFWs, I mean, the VHWs, it means the which. Uh, Firewall, which LB. What it means? It means the firewall or the LB, okay, it is based on, for example, the, the Linux, okay, Linux, okay. And uh, you should know that uh, for the Linux, okay, it can be a wish machines, okay. 
So it is one way to achieve this. And another way is what? Another way is we can use the physical device to generate different logical devices. How to do this? It is which systems, okay? It is the terminologies that what we used, okay? Maybe you should know that for another vendors, okay? Maybe you are familiar with, okay? For example, maybe for another vendors, okay, it will call it the WSIS or whatever. It will use another terminology, but what it is, actually, it is just use one physical firewall, okay, to divide into different logical firewalls, okay? It is just, I know. Whatever, uh, which terminology is uh, when they use, okay, it is the same thing. Okay, so in this course, okay, we will just we will describe uh, common Ethernet switching security technologies, okay. Example, the port isolation, the port security, okay. Mark address flappings, okay, dedication, some control, interface rate limitations, so, okay. Mark address table security, so, okay, DHCP snooping, and uh, IBS guard. And uh, besides this, okay, this is the uh, traditional as night uh, uh, switching security technologies. We will introduce another advised firewall features, okay, it inclu including all the standby technologies and uh, which system, okay. Now let, let's look at uh, the contents, okay. The first part is the uh, Eisenhower uh, switching switches, uh, securities, okay. The first part is the port isolation. Okay, now first let's look at why we need to use the port isolation, okay. The first part is, okay, yeah, we can use, uh, we can use, uh, Technologies to introduce to explain why we need to use the port isolations. Okay. For example, okay, we know that in the traditional uh, uh, switching technologies, uh, uh, how do we introduce we learn these technologies to our students? Okay, we learn technologies. We will see that okay, uh, we need to divide one larger. Uh, broadcast domain into uh, some small broadcast domains, okay, right. And uh, use, by use this technologies, okay, we can isolate, uh, isolate them, so, okay, they can't communication with each other. So if they want, to, they want to communication with each other, so we need to uh, deploy another uh, technologies and we call that uh, the interway line, for example, so it is the interway line routings, okay. We call it interplane routings. We can use the router. We can use the sub interface. We can use the uh, as uh, we learn interface. We, we learn if okay, that is what we would. Uh, that is how to, uh, that is how do we introduce we learn these technologies to our students, right? And uh, but uh, insights, okay, insights we learn. Okay, inside is we learn. Inside is we learn. How do we do the isolation? Okay, the way that this technology is, it can't achieve this, okay. So how do we do this, okay. For example, so for the PE, what, PC1, okay, for the PC1, for the PC2 and the PC3, you don't want to, you don't want uh, the PC1 communication with the PC2 and the PC3, so how to do this, okay. That is the problem, okay. So, okay. In the traditional work, okay, we will use the VLAN technologies to isolate layer two broadcast domains, okay. But uh, on large scale network, there are various service requirements. For example, okay, for example, okay, for example, I have stated before, sir, we can't use they belong to the same VLAN, so how to do the, the isolations, okay. So the uh, solution is the port isolation, okay. So what is port isolation, okay. Port isolation can isolate interface in a VLAN. Actually, if they, it doesn't matter if, it doesn't matter if, whether they are in the, in a same VLAN, okay. It just, uh, it will isolate interface, okay. Doesn't matter which VLAN it belongs to, okay. That is, you only need to add interface to a port isolated group, okay. We uh, not notice that the group, it uh, have a uh, terminology, we call it uh, isolation group, okay. 
we just need to use the, the port isolation group to implement a layer two isolation between the interface, okay? Port isolation provides security and a flexible networking scheme for customers, okay? So let's do our explanation, what is the port isolation is, okay? You buy you buy this uh, topology, okay? You can see that PC1 and PC2, they are in the same subnet, okay? So by default, they are in the same way, you know, they are in the VLAN 2, okay? They can communicate with each other. But if we add them in the same, it, uh, you need, need to notice it must be in the same isolation group. For example, so we add the this port and this port to the same port isolation group. For example, so you, it is a port isolation group one, okay? And then, okay, you can just uh, uh, think in all the interface in, in the same isolation group, the kind of communication, the kind of communication with each other, okay? But you should notice that it says they can't communicate with each other at layer two. What it means, okay, what it means? It means they can communicate with layer three. What does that mean, okay? Uh, for example, okay, for example, so I will explain. So for example, for this switch, the PC1 send uh, a frame, okay, to this switch, okay. How do the, how do the, how do the switch know that, okay, this frame cannot communicate with this, this port, okay. We should know that for the switch, it will, just uh, uh it just uh, will uh forward the frame by searching the mark table okay so what is the most important uh, question the same physical that can find uh, different different focus uh, more than once uh it can't one one part can just uh, belong to one part isolation group it doesn't uh, it, you can't find them to different isolation groups Okay, so the answer is count. Okay, so what a, what you can see in the multiples, I think uh, it will be the MAC address. Okay, MAC address, MAC address. And uh, maybe it is the port, and this port, it means the output port, okay, and the VLAN, right? And maybe it has the aging time, the aging time. But uh, we can just uh, see, okay, in the MAC table, so we can have the, we can see the MAC address and its port, okay. Now the PC1 send a frame, okay, to the PC2, okay. The switch received this frame, okay. It, it will, it by search the MAC address table, okay, by searching the MAC address table, okay. It will know this frame, okay, it uh, is, uh, from this interface and it is the session is in the maybe okay okay you will find that right and uh, we shall know that z belongs to the port isolation group okay so we have already said that z in the same port isolation group okay they are in the same group if they are in the same group okay this frame okay the switch it will drop it so the kind of communication we communication with each other but we have already seen that it is at layer two what it means it means pc1 and pc2 the communication with each other directly what it means directly so okay so it means can pc1 communication with pc2 not directly okay the answer is yes how to do achieve this? The answer is a proxy, okay. The answer is proxy, ARP proxy. Maybe, I don't know if you, how you heard it before. The te technology we call it is the ARP proxies, okay. What is the ARP proxies, okay? You can just, just try to imagine. If we do the port isolations, okay, all the frame, okay, the frame received from the PC1, okay, it will not send to the PC2. It means all the frame, okay, uh, it doesn't matter the unicast, the broadcast, all the mecast, all the frame, okay, received from one member 
uh, member portal, okay? It will not send to another member portal. So what it means, you can just try to think, if the PC1 want to communicate with the PC2, the first thing is the PC1 needed to know the PC2's MAC address, how to know it will send the ARP packet, right? Okay, the first thing is send an ARP request, okay? And the request is request for 10.1.1, okay, dot one, dot one, dot two, okay? But it shows that this part will not send to this port, so okay, PC one will not receive the ARP request. But you will find that in this place we have one routers, right? Maybe okay, we just imagine, okay, we just assume, okay, this route, okay, it is the gateway, okay, it is the ten dot one dot one two hundred forty or fifty four, okay. This is the gateway, okay. So what will happen? We will find that this port. It is not in the hot isolation group, and we should know that the ARP request is a, a broadcast frame, okay? So the switch will send the broadcast frame to and to the port that not belong to the isolation group, okay? So the PC3 will receive the ARP request. What will happen? The PC3 will check the ARP destination, okay? You will find that it is requested for PC2, okay, not uh, itself IP address. So it will drop the ARP packet, okay, it will drop the ARP request. And uh, in the gateway, okay, we will enable this function, we call it the ARP proxy, okay, this functions, okay. What will happen, to, okay? For the this gateway, okay, it will, it will see, it receive the ARP request, okay. And uh, it knows, okay, this for, this for this IP address, okay, 10.1.1.2, okay, it will notice that this, okay, this uh, IP address is in the same template with it itself. So it will try to answer the ARP, okay, it will give a ARP reply, okay. And uh, what is the reply MAC address, okay? For example, we assume this interface is a MAC address is the MAC, or mark C, okay, mark C, mark A, and uh, mark B, okay. So now in the piece one, okay, it's ARB entry will looks like uh, this. Okay, now the piece one have already knows, have ARB entries, okay. It will send a frame to which one, okay. It will send a, uh, IP packet, okay, the IP packet is destination, destination is, oh, sorry, this is should be this, okay. It will send uh, an ARP packet, okay, destination for PC2, but uh, the MAC address is to PC, MAC address is uh, to the routers, okay. And the, then the router will receive the, uh, the uh, will receive, right, will receive it, right, okay. And what will happen, the router will send ARP request to PC2, okay, and then it will send the packet to the PC2, okay. Now, PC2 have already received this packet. It needed to just to uh, construct a uh, reply and send it to PC1, so, okay. The first thing is, is it still to send an ARP request, but it shouldn't that the ARP request will not be received by PC1, but it will be received by the routers, okay, and then the router will send an ARP reply to PC2, okay. So in PC2, it's ARP, uh, ARP, ARP table will look like, okay, looks like this, okay, it is the mark three, okay. So you will find that the PC1 and the PC2, they can communicate with each other directly, but they can just finish the communication by the help of the routers. And uh, this function is the ARP proxies. And uh, what is the meaning of this function? It is you don't want the PC1 and the PC2, the commun communication with the others, okay? The traffic will send to the routers. And maybe 
for example, this is not a router. This is a fuel wall, or this is a uh, another service. In this service, you can do some security check. Okay, I mean the check is not the AP layer. Okay, the check is in the application layer. Okay, in the application layer. Okay, and. Uh, by check the application layers, okay, you can decide if they can communicate with the others, okay. So that is the meaning of these functions, ARP proxies. So you will find that we do the port isolate, okay, by use these functions, but we can let them communicate with each others. But if we use these functions, ARP proxy, we'll still use another functions to just issue the security between the communication with PC1 and PC2. So, okay, that is the meaning. And you should know that it means the communication with layer twos. And actually, it is just the layer two isolations. What it means? It means we also have a layer three isolations. Okay, what is different? It, the different is if we do the layer three isolations, the ARP proxy functions. It will still it doesn't it doesn't work. Okay. Just because this function it will check. Okay. It will check the IP headers. Okay. We shall we have already known that. Uh this part this port and this port, okay. The port the port, okay, for the switch, okay, it will receive an IP. Uh we just try to assume, okay, this router is okay, it uh, enables the ARP proxy function, okay. ARP, okay, proxy functions, okay. And uh, the PC1 and PC2 can finish the ARP learning, okay. But uh, the communication we need, need to just uh, pass through, okay, pass through, pass through the routers, okay. What will happen, okay. This packet, okay, PC1 will send it to routers and the router will send it to PC2, but uh, this packet, it will pass through the switch right, okay. And this switch, okay, it will record uh, this port, okay, is IP and uh, MAC. What it means, okay, for the switch, it will record, okay, this IP address, okay, it is belong to this port, and this IP address is belong to this port, okay. So, this, you will find that this pa this packet, okay, although it is comes from this port, but it will check the source IP address and the destination address. And it will find that, okay, the source address and destination address are in the same isolation group. So they can't kind of communicate with each other. So that is layer three isolations. So just so you can think, for the layer two isolations, we, the switch will just check the frame, okay. But for the layer three isolations, the switch will check the IP headers. Okay, that is the difference, okay. So now, now let's look at the working mechanism of the port isolation. So actually, so I this forward mechanism. Uh, I think uh, both. Uh, it is uh just you can just think about it. the this this functions. Okay, it needed to form the control. I mean, it it needed to uh it 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 will form uh tables. Okay. In these tables, it will have the the relationship between port, mark, and IP. Okay, right. In uh, the uh, I mean the uh, the process of the form these tables. Okay, you can think it is a control plan. But when it try to control the packet between this those those pieces, okay, it is the forwarding. Okay, it is a forwarding plan. Okay, makes sense. So you can, uh, so it is not like uh, the. You, you can just think it is like, uh, okay, the this table. Okay, it's just like a routine tables. Okay, you need to form a tables. Okay, so you can call this process it's a control plan. But uh, we all know that for routine tables, if you use the routine table to forward the packet, we will call it a forwarding plan, right? So it is the same, okay. When this table it works, okay. The working process, okay. By use use these tables, it is the forwarding uh, plans, okay. 
Now we can look at the working mechanisms of support isolations. And uh, actually, so I have already just uh, finished it. Okay. So for the isolation mode, okay, it, it has two modes. Okay. The first one is the isolation at layer two and the interworking at layer three. So I've already explained it. Okay. You can you can by ARP proxy these functions, okay, to uh, deploy, okay, they have communication with at layer three, but the kind of communication at layer two, okay. And another isolation mode is the layer two and the layer three, okay, it means the switch will check the layer two and the level three, okay. But what is the problem? The problem is, okay, for example, if the switch is only a layer two switch, I mean, maybe it has the live three functions, but it just a function a layer two switches. It's just folding the frames. Okay, if you want to try, if you want to use the layer three isolations, what it means? It means for this switch, it needed to check the IP headers. It needed to uh, decapture solutions the packet to the IP headers. So what it means? It means it will. Uh, you can just it will increase the working load, right? So you will find that any features or most of the features that we'll use to issue securities, it will increase the working load of the switches or the routers. And uh, actually, for the firewalls, it is the same. If you have experiment, you should know what I mean. Okay. And uh, for the directions, I think we didn't need to lay it. Why? Just because all the isolations in Huawei device, it is the B directions, okay? You can find that by default, you need directions, isolation is disabled. And uh, in real network, nobody uses the you need directions isolation. It means just a one way isolations. Nobody uses it, okay? We, we use the B direction isolations. Okay. Now let's look at how to configure the port isolations, okay. The first command, okay, is this, okay. Just enable port isolations in the port wheels. And uh, you can use the group, okay, and the group ID to specify the group IDs. And uh, by default, okay, the group ID is one, okay. And uh, we have already said, okay, we, for the port isolations, we have layer two and uh, layer two and layer three modes, okay. And um, by default, okay, the port isolation mode is layer two and uh, layer three in the working mode, okay. So what it means, it means uh, you can communication by layer two, but you can communication with layer three. So if you want to uh, implement or uh, deployment the layer two and layer three, Isolation, okay, you can use the, all these parameters, okay, to specify it. And, uh, okay, this part, this part is this command, okay, configurations, you need directions, isolations, okay, you can use this command, okay. Uh, but I think you just uh, know this command, okay, it, 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 uh, it exists, okay, nobody use it, okay. So now let's look at uh, config uh, example, uh, examinations, okay. Examples. Okay, now we have uh, a switch, okay, and this switch is have two port, uh, three portals, okay, and uh, and we have three pieces, PC1, PC2, and PC3. So now we need to achieve this, uh, achieve, achieve this, uh, they, uh, achieve this, uh, to light PC1 and PC2, they kind of communication with each other, so, okay. So what, what we need to do, okay, the first thing so we can, and that, okay, we needed to change the port isolation mode to all. And actually, so if we don't have, we don't configure the root as the gateways and don't configure the IP proxies, okay, you can just uh, to keep the port isolation mode as default. Okay, it is okay, it can work, okay. And then we need to configure all the three port config is in the face mode, we know that uh, this is PC, it is not it is not a service, okay. The frame that sent by PC will not carry the winner text. So we need to configure the interface mode, okay, the link type to access mode, not the trunk mode, okay. And then we need to enable the features, okay, in this port and this port, okay. 
And uh, for this part, uh, we don't need to configure it, okay? So it is very easy. Okay, so how to uh, verify it, okay? Just use this command, uh, display port isolate group two, okay? You will find that uh, these two interfaces uh, are in the same isolate group. And then if you try to just uh, uh, just uh, to execute a ping command, okay, on PC1, and this address is the PC2, you will find, uh, okay, the result is destination host and reachable. Okay, so you will find that you, they can communicate with the others. Okay, now let's look at another security features about the traditional as the not switching securities. Okay, it is the mark address table security. Okay, so now before we introduce the new features, so let's look at uh, another thing, what uh, some concept about this, okay, this uh, technologies. So what is, it is the types of mark address entries, okay. So what is the mark types that we will see in the mark address tables, okay. And uh, I think for most people, right, uh, uh, the most uh, often seen seen type should be dynamic uh, mac address address, right? Okay, what uh, it is obtained by learning source mac address of packet received on the interface. Okay, that is the just uh, mostly uh, seen. Okay, packet. Okay, uh, but uh, what uh, what will happen if you just uh, reset or just uh, reboot the device? Okay the MAC address, okay, this address, it will lose, okay, and uh, you need to learn it uh, again, okay. So, for example, for some uh, some MAC address, for example, so for a service, okay, this service, it has a fixed uh, uh, connected port, and uh, you don't want to need uh, the traffic uh, just uh, occurs a little loss. So what we will do, is maybe you will try to use a static MAC address, okay? It means, it mean, it means uh, these entries are manually configured by users and uh, they delivered to each interface card, okay? Uh, I think you don't need to care about it. It just mean, means about the line card, okay? It is about the car, class, uh, classes uh, switches, okay? Static MAC address entries will never age out, okay? After a device receipt or interface board is hot, swept, or rest, okay? It is, you, you will find that it is about uh, the line card, okay? After uh, the static MAC address entries will saved on the device or interface board are not lost, okay? After uh, interface typically bound to MAC address, okay? Other interface discard packet originated from that uh, source of addresses, okay? So the last one is the black hole MAC address entrance. What it is, it is just like a black hole uh, root entrance. Okay, it is configured by the administrators and uh, all the frames that are designated to this entrance will be dropped. Why? It is just because this switch will not have, uh, I mean, active entrance for this MAC, just because it is black hole MAC address. Okay. So now let's look at uh, what we will learn in this part, okay? It is the, we have the one, two, three, four, five, okay? We have four uh, method to achieve MAC address table security, okay? The first one is the static MAC address address, okay? And the second one is the backhaul MAC address address, and the third one is the how to limit it or how to accelerate the dynamic MAC address interest aging, okay. And uh, the four, the four, uh, the, uh, the fourth uh, method is disable MAC address mechanism, okay. Uh, and the last one is limited number of the learning matches, okay. Okay, now let's look at uh, from the first ones. Uh, the first one is the static MAC address interest, okay. We can use, okay. We can use this to configure market address entrance of fixed uplink device. Okay, more all market address of trust users uh, terminals such as uh, the city market address entrance to issue communication securities. Okay, for the um, the second part. Okay, I think uh, 
I mean the trust that you're similar, so maybe you will similar, or maybe you will be similar, okay. But for the this part, fixed uplink device, what it means, for example, okay, this is a switch, this is end users, okay, it is terminal, okay, it is terminal, and uh, this is the routers, okay. For example, so we should know that uh, for the switches, okay, just as your plans, okay, as the network administrator's plans, okay, the, this port only have one just offset device, okay, it is the routers. So in the market address tables, okay, in this port, for example, it is port one, it is short to only have one entrance, okay, only have one entrance, okay, just uh, about this port. So how to keep the security is, okay, if what if uh, hackers you want to do uh, make in the middle uh, uh, attack, okay, it what is the result? The result is in this port, you will see two, maybe you will see two messages just about the this port. But you should know that it is impossible just because you from this port, okay, only one have one offsite device. So how to uh, uh, issue securities, okay? You can use the city can make the address entrance, okay? You can bind, okay, this port, this, this interface is a uh, MAC address, okay, to this port. And then you can disable MAC address limiting or just limited this port, okay? The, that uh, that part the matrix address two okay the number two one okay they can or uh, they can achieve the same okay the 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 the, the same purpose okay so the, uh, it is the first part about uh, the method about uh, the matrix tables okay and the second one is the black hole matrix tables which is okay. It is a symbol, okay, just from, okay, some hackers, okay, from attacking the network, okay. For example, you you know someone, okay, you know it, uh, source uh, meta address and uh, has tried to do some um, uh, some attack, for example, the main in the middle, okay, main in the middle, okay. You can just, uh, you, you just uh, configure its source address to the black hole MAC address, okay. And then the switch will drop the packet, okay, drop the frame that received from the hackers, okay. And uh, the, the third, okay, the third is the, you can just uh, configure the edge time, okay. You can just uh, to uh, smell the time, okay, so just uh, to accelerate the aging of the MAC address address, just because for most switches, okay, the MAC address entries, okay, the number is limited, for example, it's so 1K or 2K, okay. But you will know that maybe, for example, okay, for example, so this is a switch, so okay, this is switch, so and, uh, it, and uh, there are a lot of APs connected, okay, all this, it is APs, okay, connected to these switches, and uh, maybe this APs, okay, is uh, okay connected to some mobility users okay mobility users it means uh, maybe this user will just connect it to the APs for one minute or just uh, five minutes okay whatever it will not last for a long time what it means it means all these entries will make interest about the mobility users okay maybe it's just uh, uh, tourists, okay. Uh, maybe just uh, some guys, okay. Okay, the entrance, okay, will learn by the switches, and uh, you should that it is just the access switches, and maybe the entrance will be large, okay. For example, the, for for example, the, okay, the first uh, group of people, okay, they are the guests, okay, they come uh, one case, okay, and uh, for this switches, it is mark mark uh, just entrance, okay. It's limited, it's one case, okay. But we know that by default, the edge time is too long, okay. For example, so another people, okay, these people have already moved to another place, okay. But another people, okay, this group of people is all, okay, it is still one case. What will happen? It will, uh, it, the thing is, okay, the switch will just, uh, okay, 
uh, re, just uh, relearning, okay, relearning is uh, one key, okay, just because uh, this one key have already existed in the magnitude samples, it means it needed to do a swap, okay. Swap what? All the entry, okay, and uh, new entries, it needed to do a swap, okay. It will be a little cost for the three chairs, okay, for the calculator, uh, working load and all the memories, okay. So what you can do is you can to configure the edge times, okay. But uh, how much, to, uh, how many time, uh, how many time configs, okay. Uh, it depends on you uh, service, okay. So it, we don't have uh, exact uh, uh, times, okay. So if you configure the time to shorter, so okay, maybe you will don't have the old entries just because all the entries will aging in a uh, short times, okay. And actually, say you don't need to. You don't need don't need to worry about if the time is too short. What will happen? If it is too short, okay, the just one frame, okay, just one frame from the entries, okay, okay, the switch will relearning the match the entries, right? Okay. Okay. Now let's look at look at how to configure the market address. Uh, securities. Okay, the first part is the static market address. Okay, it is simple. So we need to use the market address static. Okay, and uh, followed by market address interface type, interface numbers. Okay, you can also bind the VLAN IDs. Okay, and uh, the second one is configure backhorn backhorn market address entries. Okay, you can use this command. Okay, market address backhorn and the market address, okay, it means more than 100 times in three times. Okay, more than 100 times, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now let's look at uh, the next part, it is the market address aging time. You can use this command to configure the market address address and this address uh, you can, uh, no, 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 it is, is uh, it will set, it will work for all the market address entries. If you set, uh, if you, you can use this command agent time to, uh, for example, uh, I think normally people will reduce the agent time, so nobody will configure the agent time to a large time. Now it is uh, the disabled market address learnings. You can just, uh, uh, you can use this command to, to disable uh, the interface learning, okay? And uh, what will happen to, uh, if you disable the interface like just uh, learning abilities? It, it will have different actions. It depends on how you configure it. The, by default, uh, the device will take uh, the 40 actions after MAC address learning is disabled. That is, the device for the packet according to the MAC address table. It means that if the destination, the destination uh, market address is not in the market address table, the packet will be uh, the packet will be job. Uh, the packet will be job. Okay. Uh, but if you take the forwarding access, it means it will just like a broadcast uh, frame. It will be loading. And uh, if the action is set to discard. The device looks up the source address of the packet in the MAC address table. If the interface and the MAC address match the MAC address address, the device forwards the packet according to the destination MAC address. If the interface and MAC address do not match the address, the device discards its packet. It means it means the packet will be job. It will it will not be it will not be for uh, floating. And uh, then it is, the, you can also just uh, do disable market address learning by the default, uh, not in the interface base, you can just uh, in the VLAN base. It means you can in the VLAN wheel, you can disable the market address learning. And uh, then it is, is the, how to limit it, uh, the number of the MAC address entries. You can just uh, use this command, make a limited maximum in the interface wheel. 
and you can set this uh, value. And uh, also for the Mac Limited, it has the actions, the discard actions, and the forward actions. And uh, what it, the meaning is the same with the Mac JS Learn Disable the action. They have the same process action. And uh, then it is the Mac Limited alarm. Uh, by default, the device will generate alarm when the number of the Learn Mac JS entries reach limited. And uh, if the network administrator want to see the alarm and uh, maybe you want to judge if something happened, maybe you can use this command. And uh, the next one is the max, uh, max limited maximum. You can also to command, uh, you can also to do this command into the VLAN wheel. Now let's look at example of config uh, uh, Mac address table. We have, or in this ledger, we have three uh, switches, switch one, switch two, and uh, switch three. And uh, in the switch one, there are user network connected to it. And uh, in the user network two, there are another uh, inner wall, uh, user network connected to the switch two. What we will do? The basic configurations that have already been uh, completed, and uh, the user network one belongs to VLAN 10, and the user network two belongs to VLAN 20. And uh, the switch three is disabled from learning Mac address from user network one. It means the switch three, it will not learn any uh, source mark from user network one. And, uh, but, and uh, for the unit network uh, two, you will find that uh, we will limit the, max, uh, the maximum numbers of the max address on the unit network two by set a value in this interface, or you can set it on the VLAN. So uh, let's look at uh, how to configure it. It is very simple. So the first one is we can disable the we can finish it, we can disable the max just learning or we can set as a max, a max limited maximum in the interface interface wheel. So in the the uh, in the switch three we can uh, we can configure the limited in this by use this command and uh, we can use this command to set a max limited maximum. And you can open these features. You can let uh, the switch to generate alarm log. And you can set the action after the Mac, after the uh, Mac address entries reach the Mac limited maximum. Okay. And uh, also, you can achieve this bar in the uh, wheel and wheel. And the command is the same. So you can find that, okay, we can use this command. And how to verify it, you can use this command, display Mac limited command. You will find that what you configured in this switch. You can try, you, you can use command to check why the Mac address limited rules are configured successfully. And uh, I think uh, just a uh, check, you can use the command display Mac limited to check uh, which port uh, and uh, the value uh, about this, uh, this port. Uh, and uh, you can see the default functions if the market address entries uh, reach the maximum numbers. Uh, it can be forward or discard, just uh, depends on you. And uh, you can open the alarm functions. Now let's look at uh, the port security. So let's look at uh, what is the background of the port security. If an uh, enterprise requires each access switch interface connected to the terminal allows only one PC to access the network, you will find that they, it, this is the first requirement. And uh, the number of, it means the number of the market address entries is limited. You will find that uh, this requirement, we can use the MAC limited, this feature, we can use this attribute. If an employee attempts to connect a small switch or hub to an interface, this behavior should be detected and prohibited, as shown in the figure on the left. You will find that these functions 
we don't need to practice greatism. And uh, so why we need to practice greatism? So we, we find that in addition, some enterprise may require that only data from sent by terminals with trust mark. You will find that what is important? Important is the trust mark address. It means the certain, the specific MAC address can be forwarded to the app place switch network by switch. Employees can not change the locations. For example, so for this PC, this PC one, it is connected to this port. You can see, see uh, think it is port one. If if it wanted to change uh, the connected port to the uh, from the PC uh, from the port one to port two, okay, it is also not allowed. It is also should be prohibited. So we will find that uh, which requirement is uh, uh, port square D for you will find that uh, not for the number limited. It is uh, to require certain uh, certain PC or certain terminals. Uh, you need you require them. They should be fixed in the six uh, specific port. We can use the port square D. So let's look at. Uh, uh, the introduction to the port security. So you can configure port security on specific interface of a switch to limit the number of the MAC address entries learned by the interface. That is not the most important uh, uh, meaning of the port security. Uh, port security is, is you, can, you can use the port security to convert dynamic MAC address learned on an interface into security uh, MAC address, what is it means? It means the, for this, this port, I will only trust the security MAC address. So that it means this. And uh, for the security MAC address, it included a dynamic and aesthetic security MAC address and a ticky MAC address. Uh, in this uh, slide, uh, we will introduce what is the dynamic, uh, static, and uh, sticky MAC address, security MAC address. And uh, this function is to provide uh, an authorized user from communication with the switch using this interface and uh, therefore enhance the device security. So you will find that what is the most uh, important uh, uh, meaning for port security is just uh, it will limit it. Uh, you, we will find that for Mac limited, we can just uh, we can just uh, uh, limit limit how many terminals can connect it to this port. But uh, you can't limit it which one can uh, connect it to this interface. But uh, port security can do this. Now let's look at the working mechanisms of the port security. Uh, security Mac address is the Basic of the um, working mechanism of post security is we divide uh, them to three types. The first type is the dynamic MAC address. Okay, it is the security dynamic MAC address. Okay, the MAC address is converted on an interface with port security enabled by sticky, but uh, sticky MAC address is disabled. It means uh, after the device restart or the, it is the first restart. Dynamic security MAC address are lost and need to be relearned. By default, dynamic security MAC address are not aged out and can be aged out only once age time is set. It means if you convert the, for example, now the switch one and it is a port one, they have already learned three MAC entry. And you can convert the three dynamic MAC address entry to security MAC address. And if you restart, it will not age out until if you if you siege the age time and it will age it, but it will be uh will not age out. And then it is the security static MAC address, it means MAC address will manually configure on uh, interface with port security enabled. What it means? It means that this uh, security MAC address is configured just like uh, you configure the state MAC address, static MAC address, MAC address. 
and uh, so you will know that it will not age out and also will not uh, lost the after the device which is that uh, just uh, because it is a static MAT address. And uh, the third part, uh, the last one is the sticky MAT address. This MAT address is converted on an interface with both port security and the sticky MAC enables. Okay. The sticky MAC address are not aged out and are not lost after device reset. You will find that the uh, stick image address and the security stick image address, they are just uh, similar. Now let's look at uh, what uh, uh, function we will uh, we will use the one we use is the security MAC address. It has three protection actions, and uh, the first one is restricted. It means uh, if uh, we will discard a packet with non-existing source MAC address and uh, send a trap, it means uh, we will know that if we use the port security features on these tables on this port, uh, the MAC address address about this port will not just will not like uh, the normal port. You can to use the you can convert you can convert the dynamic address trap a dynamic MAC address from the normal uh, dynamic MAC address, okay? It is a security MAC address, or you can state it, you can configure it, configure a security static MAC address, or you can use a static MAC address. And uh, if the MAC address, I mean the source MAC address of the frame is not in the, is not in the security MAC address at tables, the packet will, be, it will be forward, but uh, it will, the switch will send a trap. And uh, another action is a pro, uh, protected. It means it will discard a packet, and, uh, but it will not send the trap. So it, for the restricted, the switch will also discard the packet. And uh, for the last one, it is a shutdown. It means if the interface will receive uh, packet that uh, uh, the uh, the source MAC address is not in the security MAC address, the switch will shut down this interface. And uh, you will find that for the uh, status, if you use this command, for example, you use the display interface brief command to say uh, the interface uh, static uh, status, you will find that it is not the normal down, it is all administrator down, it is the error down, and it will generate all alarms. And uh, how to recover this, this interface, you can use the command, it should be the error down command. And uh, to set the error down calls, you, shall, you need to set the error down calls to the port security shutdown. And then you will send an interview. If in if between or during the interview, the switch doesn't receive a frame that uh, I mean the source mark is not in the static MAC address or in the static or in the dynamic MAC address. If it doesn't receive any frame that not that is source MAC address is not in the security MAC address. And then this command, it will just uh, recovery this port. That means this port will uh, come back to normal state. It can still, it can continue to uh, forward the frame. Now let's look at uh, application of port security. To ensure security of the aggregation device and limited the number of access user, config port security on the aggregation device and set the maximum member of a security MAC address. Uh, for example, we can see that for this part, this is access switches, and uh, for the department A, we can change the MAC address of the large number of fixed users to sticky MAC address. After the device is restarted, bound MAC address entries will not have lost. And uh, for the development B, we can configure the port security features on this port. 
and we can configure MAC address of the small number of fixed end users as a security static notice it is a static MAC address. Of the devices uh, restarted, okay, also the MAC address entries will not lose them. And uh, for the development C, we can convert MAC address of the frequent access user it into dynamic security MAC address. So it is easy to delete bounding MAC address entries. Now let's look at how to configure policy security. The first uh, command is you need to enable policy security on the interface. And then you need to set the maximum number of security MAC address in the interface. You can use command and by default, uh, for example, uh, maybe you can set it to one, two, three, but by default it is set to one. And uh, you can use this command, port security MAC address and the MAC address values, VLAN and VLAN IDs. You can use this command to set static security MAC address. And uh, then you can configure what action the device will take after I mean, it will re it will re it will receive a frame that not in the security MAC address uh, table. You can set it to protect, restrict, shutdown, and uh, then you can also set uh, the pro the edge time for uh, security MAC address entry. You will find that they have different edge time, and then you can use this command. Enable the CK MAC address function on the interface. It means uh, you. Uh, it means uh, all the uh, MAC address that have already learned uh, on this interface will convert to CK MAC address. And uh, then you can use this uh, command uh, set the maximum number of CK MAC address. Okay, that means uh, that uh, the maximum of a sticky MAC address, you will find uh, this is a different uh, uh, command just because uh, uh, if you if you uh, uh, enable port uh, security max, uh, sticky uh, MAC address, all the uh, all the MAC address on the interface will be converted to sticky MAC address. And uh, another config uh, is uh, uh, the config of sticky MAC address address. You can use this command by manually to configure a sticky MAC address. Now let's look at an example for configuring port security. It is a screen dynamic MAC address. Uh, MAC address. We have two switches, two switch, two switches, switch one and switch two, and we have four PC one, and for different ports that are connected to our terminals, we will. Uh, what is necessary to do? What is necessary to do afterwards to restore port uh, operations? For the restrict and uh, protect, you don't need to ending things. But uh, if it is a shut down, you, you maybe you need to check why for this interface it will receive a frame that are not in the security MAC address entries. And uh, actually, so if I mean, for example, if for example, for the switch two for this port, if you set the protect action to shut down, and uh, if the I mean the unknown, the unknown source mark, unknown source mark, uh, received from from this port, normally, if uh, this this port can receive the uh, unknown uh, source mark uh, uh, source frame uh, continuously. The this port it will keep uh, the shutdown status. It will not be recovered by the command. And actually, so by default, by default, I mean by default, if you set the protect action shutdowns and you don't do an another config, the config, the this port it will it will keep. Uh, it will keep the shutdown status until you just you to do you do undo shutdown by yourself. If you don't do any 
uh, configurations. But uh, I have uh, introduced another configuration. It is the uh, error down recovery. You can use this command, error down recovery, to set uh, a mechanism that will automatically recovery if this interface doesn't receive the unknown uh, frame fault for just uh, for example for one minute or another minute. It just uh, depends on you. You can just uh, undo shutdown by yourself or use this command. But uh, whatever command you used, you need to check why this interface will receive the the unknown uh, unknown MAC address that it shall not be supposed to occur on this part. That is what you need to do. And uh, let's look at uh, what we will do. Uh, what we will do about uh, this uh, this voltages. The first requirement uh, is that we need to configure the port security on switch one, and uh, we will set a maximum number of max address lined by this port uh, and uh, this port. It means uh, for PC one and PC two, we will need we, we will set uh, the, uh, the this port the port uh, the maximum the max uh, the maximum number to one. Once the interface is connected to multiple PCs, the switch we need to send alarm. And I think uh, each one is that it, you just said uh, to, it is uh, by default, it will send alarm. And in addition, interface can still forward a data frame from authorized PCs. It means uh, you, do, you, should, uh, you, you should not uh, set the protect action to shut down or uh, protect it. And then, okay, we will find that uh, we need to send uh, the uh, maximum number of the max address that can be learned by this interface. It is about uh, the P switch one to one, just because in this switch one, we still have a downstream switch, it is switch two. When number of the learned max address exceeded the maximum numbers, the switch will generate alarms and shut down this interface, so you should know that for this interface, we should set the protect action to shut down. Okay, so what we need to configure on switch one. For all the interface, we need to configure, we need to enable the port security feature. And for different port, we need to send a different mark, a max, a max mark number. And for different port, we need to set a different protect action. Let's look at uh, let's how to verify our configuration. We can use this, this command, this MAC address security. So you can find that what is the result of the port security? The result is different type of, or, or we can say it is a new type of uh, MAC address. It is, we, call, we can call it a security type, right? It is a security MAC address interest. You will find that it is a type is different. Normally, the type is the static, Bitcoin, or dynamic. But for the policy security, these features, you will generate all the entries. And this type is the security. It means if you enable the policy security features on this interface, the switches will check the MAC address entries whose type is security. And uh, now let's look at uh, what is the TK MAC address. It is an example of the config. And uh, we have a switch, and this switch we have two, we have three pieces. We need to config a port security on switch. We need to enable port security on switch on this port and this port. And we need to set a maximum number of MAC address that can be learned by uh, the port one and port uh, two, and uh, we need to convert. You shall know that. You shall know that uh, we can convert security dynamic MAC address lent by this interface to sticky MAC address address. It just look like. It just like uh, you can just convert the dynamic MAC address to sticky MAC address. But now we know that uh, it is not uh, normal dynamic address. It is a security 
this is a security dynamic MAC address. And uh, on the last part is the third part, we need to set maximum number of MAC address that can be lent to one. And uh, you should know that uh, the, the, for this part, uh, the MAC address, the security MAC address is not lent by itself. And uh, we don't use the convert, we don't use this function. What do we do? What we do? What we will do is we will configure a, stick, a sticky MAC address entry by manually. That is what we learn. We do. Oh, now let's look at what we do. For the first part, we enable port security entry, uh, features, and then we set the max MAC number to one, and we set the port uh, the uh, the, uh, the port security MAC address, we use this command to set all the all the security MAC address to stick, stick it means if you if you restore you, or if you reset or if you restart this switches, okay, the MAC address address will not lose. And uh, for this part, uh, we do the same things. But uh, for the third part, we do the different things. It means the sticky MAC address entry is not convert by dynamic uh, MAC address entries. It is uh, configured by yourself manually. It means you should know that. Uh, it means, so what it means? Uh, it means it is, is a trusted entries. So let's uh, just remember what we said in the background. We, uh, we say if the PC1 want to try move to PC2, what will happen to? if the PC2 is not uh, aligned, the PC1 can just uh, to just uh, uh, can connect it to this part. Why? Just because the sticky MAC address, I mean, if the PC2 is not connected to this part and uh, the dynamic MAC address entry not uh, formed and uh, the, so the dynamic MAC address will not be converted to sticky MAC address. So it means for PC1, it, is, it has the opportunity to connect it to this port and access to network. But if the PC1 want to connect it to this port, it is impossible. Why? Because we enable uh, port security entries and we enable sticky MAC address and uh, the sticky, sticky MAC address and trace is configured by yourself manually and uh, maximum number, I mean the maximum of the, uh, the, the MAC address you have already set it to one. So it means for this part, for this part, only PC3 can connect it to it. And you, you can just to imagine if you do the same configurations about the PC1 and the PC2, it means PC1, PC2, and PC3, they can't move to others' uh, positions, right? You, can, you, you can't. You can just uh, connect it to the fixed port. You can to move it to another support. So now let's look at uh, the display. You can face that the display MAC address sticky. You will find that uh, for the sticky uh, MAC address, it is also the sticky, it is security MAC address, and, but uh, the type is uh, sticky. Mm -hmm. I must say that we did it right uh, now, and I don't want to miss anything from this one. Uh, sorry for that, but uh, all our lessons will have a record, so you don't have time to see the next part of the uh, uh, for the next part, you can see the our record. I know that uh, the time is over just because our schedule is just uh, uh, not uh, not considered as the real time of the lessons. So the time we exceeded the schedule times. But uh, it doesn't matter. You can do uh, do your work also. But and uh, we will 
record the lessons and you can find it after we finish the lesson. So don't worry about it. You can just have to do your things. Let's see. Sure, today is uh, the lab guide and all the materials about our lessons will be uh, will be launched uh, after the certification release officially. But then you shall know that. No, it is not uh, released uh, officially. It is just a uh, just a uh, uh, training before the launch. It is just uh, for you for your trainers uh, in our uh, training. Uh, uh, we we call it hubs. So maybe in next month you can get uh, the lab guide and all the slide and all the lesson record. Oh, this is recording the uh, So I don't know that I will check it, but just because I just uh, I will record it and but uh, uploading and other uh, workers, for example, so uploading the uh, uploading the lessons uh, to our uh, official website is uh, another another teacher's work. So I don't know. I can ask it and. Uh, Title more than about the limitations. What it means? What is means the title? Knowledge is about the exams. No, 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 no. What a difference. Uh, actually, it's, uh, all the I, I don't know Rafa, or I don't know if you learn uh, listen to the before the lessons. The next exam will be huge difference. Okay, we will uh, we will uh, you can see that uh, we have the okay. Wait a moment. Live. Uh, you you will find that uh, it is a uh, lab guide. It is just experiment. It is not a lab exam. Okay, but uh, you will find that uh, the traditional part about the routing switch is only. Taking, I'm talking about it, and not left. Oh, I know, I know that. Uh, Rafa, I, I know it means, but uh, you know that uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't know, I'm not, uh, you, you know, I'm not uh, the writers about uh, the leg exams, so I don't know the certain um, part about uh, the leg exam, but uh, I know what what we will uh, consider about uh, the leg exams. What, uh, what I can tell you is, uh, the traditional routing and switch technologies will only be a, sim a small part about the record. It will be uploaded to our websites, and I think uh, uh, we ha will have a college colleagues. It will send uh, the link to you. So, so don't worry about it. The record will be uploaded and we will send it to you maybe by the emails. So don't worry about it. You will get it. Hmm. Yes, you can just wait for it. And uh, but uh, the just uh, the I mean the emphasize part uh, will be different. Uh, maybe you can just uh, consider about uh, the next part about the labs. And uh, don't worry about it. If you don't have time. Uh, about uh, uh, on the lessons, okay, we will record it and uh, you can just uh, wait for we upload it. Don't worry about it, any record will be sent to you by, maybe just by a link, uh, uh, send an uh, email to you or the 
all the materials also will be sent to you. Don't worry about it. But I'm not uh, responsible for this part, so I don't know. Uh, I can. I don't know how we will receive the links. So but just don't worry about it. You can receive it. Okay. If you don't have the time, I think you can just uh, go to your work and do other things, and uh, I will record it. Uh, uh, and finish it, okay. Just because we have another part in the next day, so if I don't finish it, uh, for the next day, I mean tomorrow, uh, the next teacher, it will also, it, it don't have time to finish the, his schedules. So our lessons will be just uh, uh, postponed just one by one. So I will record it. If you don't have time, uh, you can just go to your walls and do other things, okay. Don't worry about it, you can get it recorded. Okay, you can just uh, see you tomorrow, Rafa. And, uh, oh no, I think you can see, see me tomorrow, just because tomorrow is another teacher. Okay, no, so, okay, I will continue uh, recording this, uh, this lessons. Okay, now uh, the next part is mark address flapping profession and uh, uh, dedications. Uh, I think uh, mark address flapping dedication is a uh, normal function, and if you have experiment about network trapeziotic, it is a uh, uh, hell possibilities for you that you will. Uh, meet uh, these functions. Just because uh, net loop, uh, it is uh, sometimes it will occur. Uh, so let's look at uh, what is these functions uh, uh, working for and what is the meaning. So, MacDress flapping occurs when MacDress is learned by two interfaces in the same wavelength on our switches. And uh, the MacDress entry learned later overrides uh, the early ones. It means uh, the MAC address will learn uh, in different interface when uh, just uh, in different time and uh, override uh, again, uh, again, uh, one by one, again, again. So if these things happen, it means when a uh, MAC address frequently switch between two interfaces, for example, in, the, in this topology, so we will find that for this switch, maybe we can assume it is a switch to this MAC address, uh, I mean, this MAC address, it will uh, frequently switches between this port and this port, and uh, we call it a uh, marked address flapping. Okay, and uh, the switch will record it, record it, record it, and uh, what will what it means meanings. You can use these uh, functions to uh, to just uh, to do a record, and then you can to see this record to judge. Uh, which port, I mean, which, uh, which port, I mean, which, uh, which port, uh, between which port, uh, maybe the net loops maybe uh, already occurs. You can just uh, use the record, uh, just, uh, 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 just uh, maybe it's just a uh, 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 judgment. Oh, no, and then, and normally the market address is caused by a loop, um, deploy loop prevention technologies such as STP, we can, eliminate uh, layer two loops. If MAC address flapping is uh, caused by network attacks uh, or other reasons, you can use uh, the following MAC address flapping prevention measures. The first one is uh, the MAC address learning priorities for interface. What it means? It means the same address learned or interface that have different priorities. For example, this port uh, is probability is five and this port uh, by default is probability is zero also. It means uh, only if, I mean, even though for switch one, it uh, learn different uh, uh, markers on, uh, it, it learn different, uh, so, uh, it learns the same market address on different uh, port. But uh, just uh, because this part, it has a hell 
a multitude as the uh, learning priorities. So for these switches, it will only lend uh, this market, uh, they will lend this market to this port, but uh, not to this port. And uh, another uh, thing is we can use this command uh, and do market address the learning priorities or learning flapping. It means if the interface connected to a buggles network device has the same priority as the interface connected to our third device, the market address entries of the buggles device learned later doesn't override the original correct market address entry. What it means? It means uh, the order override actions will not happen. To, it means uh, who is lent by first. I mean, I mean, this port you can close its fun uh, this function. You can use this command and do max just learning priority zero or loading flapping. You can use this command. It means uh, for this part, uh, this port, uh, if one max address have already exist in the max address end table and uh, the port is not this port. If the port, if this port receive a, a, a frame and its source of address is the same with another port, because this port is not a loading flapping, so this port will not learn this MAC address. So we can say the switch supports the following MAC address flapping decoration mechanisms. The first one is the William based MAC address flapping decorations, and another one is global MAC address flapping uh, decorations. Which, which one it means? It means the first one, it, the MAC address flapping dedication is only inside the VLAN. If in different VLANs we have the same MAC address, and uh, they will not uh, be considered as, as the MAC address flapping. And uh, what is the global MAC address flapping? It means uh, in different VLAN, if there are the same uh, MAC address, it will be considered as the MAC address flapping. So that is uh, different. Now let's look at uh, the VLAN based MAC address flapping dedication. When VLAN based MAC address flapping dedication is configured and uh, decade MAC address flapping on an interface, you can, confer, conf you can configure one of the following actions. The first one is the trap setting. It means the device only send a traps to NMS. The NMS, it is a concept of the SNMP, it means the Network Management Service Station. And uh, the another fun fun action is the interface blocking. It means the interface is, will be blocked for a specific uh, priority of time. And uh, the interface is disabled from sending and receiving packet. And uh, another function action is MAC address blocking. It means the device blocks only the current MAC address, but not the physical interface. So the communication of the other MAC address on the current interface will not be affected. OK, now let's go right to the global MAC address flapping dedication. When a switch dedicates MAC address flapping, it only report a trap by default and it does not take other actions. In practice, you can define the following actions after address flapping is dedicated. The first one is error done, and the other one is create, create, uh, uh, create VLANs. For example, so when an interface configured with MAC address flapping dedication uh, dedicates MAC address flapping, the interface is set to an error done state and uh, not uh, for the details. What is error done? I have already mentioned it before. So and uh, you need to undo and shut down in this interface to let uh, to let this in interface to come back to normal state or use the error uh, error down recovery command to let it uh, uh, come back to normally uh, automatically. And another uh, actions after MAC address flapping is dedicated is query VLANs. When interface configured with MAC address flapping dedication dedicates max at Philippines. The interface is removed from the VLAN. What it means, it means uh, this, this, uh, this port, it will not uh, allow uh, this VLAN path. It means, for example, so for this Mac, it will be, uh, it, uh, we know that uh, 
uh, if you have already uh, inside this VLAN, you have already dedicated uh, address flappings. If you re remove uh, the port to this VLAN, it means this VLAN, I mean this this frame with this uh, specific VLAN, it, it will not be received uh, uh, by these switches. So it is another way to prevent uh, that uh, the frame into the switches and enter into the network. And uh, let's look at uh, how to configure uh, this, this command. The first one is the my uh, Mac learning priorities we have already said it before. So the interface with higher priorities will learn will keep the Mac address and and uh, another uh, command is uh, how to uh, what is the actions we will do. So, okay. Uh, we can configure device to this kind of packet when the device is configured to prohibit MAC address flapping. You can find that uh, we will use this command, uh, MAC learning priorities, MAC flapping define action discard. And then we can use this command, undo MAC address priorities, uh, allow flapping intermings. For this port, uh, if it will receive uh, uh, frames, uh, frames, and these frames will uh, will just uh, occur so override right or override the on my address entries. It will it don't have the uh, priorities, and then we can use this command my address flapping dedication. It means uh, inside of this VLAN you enable my address flapping dedication functions, and uh, we can use some optional uh, command uh, to configure this uh, uh, these functions. For example, so we can configure a VLAN uh, wait list for MAC address flapping dedications. It means, uh, it means the by default, uh, the device performs MAC address flapping dedication in all VLANs. If you don't want to dedicate uh, some VLANs, you can use this command to accrue some VLAN. And uh, if you want to configure the action for a device that uh, take after a MAC address flapping is dedicated on an interface, okay, you can Use this command, MAC address, flapping actions. Okay, we have already introduced the, what is the difference between critical VLANs and error downs. And uh, actually, so I for this function, I mean this feature, MAC address flapping, I recommend to create VLAN. It will light uh, uh, the override VLANs that does, uh, don't have the chance into the network. And uh, but for other VLANs, it can, can also uh, into the uh, networks and uh, for the two its destinations. And uh, for the, and uh, also for the uh, agent time, uh, I mean the flapping uh, market address table, uh, you can set its agent time. And also you can uh, configure market address flapping dedication, it means, I mean, you can uh, set its block time and request time. Now let's look at the exam for configurations, MAC address flapping, prevention, and dedication. We have uh, four switches. One, uh, and uh, I think you can find that between the switch three and the switch four, so we will have a link, but this link is not uh, connected by now. And uh, for this switch one, there are one switch or survey connected to it. So what is our requirement? The requirement is the basic network configurations are completed. It means uh, SDB, for example, the other VLANs have already configured. But uh, an incorrect connections of network cable between three, two, and three cause a loop on the network. It means it is this link. Config MAC address flapping prevention on this port. It means this port of the switch to prevent attacks from authorized users. And then we need to configure MAC address flapping between switch two and two uh, on switch two to delicate uh, loops on network and uh, uh, rectify the force. So let's look at uh, what we will configure. The first one is, is we need we should know that uh, this port is connected to the service, so it should have a hell 
mark learning priorities than other portals. So in the, uh, in the, for this interface that uh, connected to survey, we will set uh, how our priorities. And uh, for the switch two, we will, uh, for this part and this part, we shown that the looping is between these two, this two parts. The two part. Uh, so we need to enable the MAC address flapping dedication functions and uh, the set the agent time. And uh, for this part and this part, we will set the action to every dance. It means if the loop network loop occurs, this interface or this interface will be shut down. And uh, also we need to need to set the error down or to recovery time. And uh, now you will see how so you see that how to configure the error down auto discovery. Okay. The command is error down auto recovery and cause followed by the cause. Now the call the cause is MAC address flapping. If it is polysquarity, you can just change the cause to polysquarity. And then it is interview, what it means. It, the interview means during the interview, network uh, uh, for network uh, for MAC address flapping, it means during the interview, if for this part, uh, there are no uh, network MAC address flapping occurs. So the 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 port will uh, come back to a normal state uh, by itself. But uh, if during the, the interview, network address flapping, or you can see network occur, network loop occurs, again, the port will state, uh, will, will say, will keep on the error down state. Uh, we can use this command uh, display MAC address flapping record to see the configuration. If you finish, finish the configurations, all the MAC address flapping will be recorded. You can find that uh, the S it means the start time and E it means end time. And uh, you can see that for the first one it means for this MAC, the first time it is uh, occur, it is learned by this part. And uh, then the port move to another port. And uh, it means this port, this MAC address, it is linked by uh, this port and this port, uh, the, uh, the two ports, they will overwritten. And what is the time of the overwritten, of course? It is the, this time, 83. And uh, what is the time of the uh, uh, MAC address flapping uh, end? It is just, uh, you can find that it should be Add a second, right? So you will find that uh, you can find that uh, ten uh, the more numbers in one second it is more than uh, ten numbers. Actually, actually, I think it is not uh, very frequent. If you say if it is a really network loops, the time may be or higher. Just uh, depends on the traffic. And then it is the Mexico. What is the Mexico? Mexico, you can just think, uh, you can just think uh, its name. What is Mexico? If you, you know what is the IPsec, you know what is Mexico. IPsec is between two IPs. So what is Mexico? Mexico is between two, uh, between a links. So you will find that uh, what is, uh, what, it, what function can you do? So you can do the data integrity check. It can do the data equations. It can do the identity authentications. It can do reply protections. All the function is the same as the IP cycle. So we can say the typical application scenarios. Mexic is deployed between switches to issue data securities. For example, so Mexic is deployed between access switches and uplink application or call switches. When the missing device exists between switches, Mexic can be deployed to issue data securities. The, th this one, I think it is, uh, maybe it will use. So maybe for us, you don't have the chance to touch the transmission device. What it means, notice the transmission device, for example, for one moment, I will check uh, um, for you two switches. Switch one and switch two, and uh, they will think they are 
uh, physical, they are physical directed directly. Uh, they are physical connected directly, but they cause a uh, huge of uh, they, they are fear or way. They cause a uh, huge destinations. But uh, so how to achieve this? You can use the transmission device. And uh, you should know that Huawei's transmission device is very famous. Transmission device. But you will find that the transmission device is not under your control. So how to keep the data security during the transmi transmission device? It, it is the uh, it is it is the work of the max uh, max security. And uh, what is the working mechanism of max security? So you can just uh, uh, learn it. You can just uh, have a brief concept. It's okay, just because uh, it is just uh, introductions. So when the device run point to point Mexic network administrator pre-configure the same security key. Okay, we call it say key on two devices use command. The two devices use Mexic key agreement. It means the MKA to elect a key survey. The key survey determines the equation scheme using equation algorithms to generate SAK based on parameters such as the CAK and it's distributed the CAK to the peer device. And it's then in this way the two devices have the same CAKs which can be used to recap the device. It means what it means, it means two switches, it will determine one service and this service will use some parameters to generate some case and this case will be be sent to pair and they will use this case to uh, just uh, generate to encrypt the data. So if the case is used all, run out, the survey will generate a new case. So it, what it, that is how it works. It is maxi. Now let's look at uh, what is the traffic control. The overview, let's look at the overview traffic uh, sporadians. What is the traffic controls? The first is the traffic uh, sporadians and the last one is the storm controls, but you will find they are similar. So what is the traffic sporadians? It just allow, uh, it is uh, for the bump traffic. What is the bump traffic? The bump, it means broadcast, unknown, and multicast. They have the same behavior for switches floating. So we, we, we shall know that in real network for floating traffic, we shall limit it its floating, uh, floating range, so a uh, uh, floating scale. So how to limit it? So we shall know that in normal situations, when a layer two Ethernet interface receive a broadcast and no enemy cast, we call it uh, bump traffic. It will forward the traffic to other layer two uh, interface in the same VLAN. As a result, uh, traffic floating occurs and. Uh, the forwarding performance of the device uh, uh, that is real rates. When a that interface on the device receives a known multicast or unicast heavy traffic of the certain type of package may affect the process of other services and switches. If you have experiments, you should know that we need to limit the bump traffic, the, I mean the uh, penalty of the interface. So what is the solution? The solution is we can use the traffic expressions, okay. We can do a rate limited, we can re limit the broadcast in all the bump traffic. And by, we can say it is, uh, uh, we can see a number, so, okay. We can prevent traffic floating caused by and bump traffic. So, uh, what is the working mechanism? So the first is the, we can, we can in the inbound directions, okay. All the expressions is worked for the inbound directions. The switches can spread a bump traffic based on the percentages, okay, with all the packet rate, all the bit rate. The device monitors the rate of the various types of packet on the interface and compares the rate with your setting values. When the traffic rate on the interface in the inbound directions reaches the uh, of the value that you said is okay, the device discard uh, exceeds the traffic. What it means, uh, for example, uh, you said the inbound percentage is uh, for example, uh, the 18 percentages leaves uh, bump traffic from inbound this, tra inbound this, uh, inbound this, port, this port is already reaches, okay, or exceeded, okay. I mean, the exceeded bucket will be dropped. And also, you can do it in the 
in the uh, William Wills, what is different? The different is uh, the working or the working uh, uh, working skill. For the this one, it is working for one interface, but for this one, it is working for the balance. It means for these switches, this traffic is uh, of into is it uh, anti this VLAN? For example, it is anti the VLAN ten. Okay, and then you can for the VLAN ten, you can send to you can you can set you can set you can set uh max numbers. If the packet exceeds the numbers, okay, the switches will drop the packet. Okay, what is the application of the traffic experience? You can use this uh special limiters. Uh, and which packet are sent by uh, taking different methods for different types of packets. It involves in following situations. You know? uh, the first one, it, in the important directions of switch interface, for example, so in the important directions of this interface, a switch wise, traffic experience can be used to limit the rate at which any packet is sent. And uh, in the outbound directions of the switch interface, for example, in the outbound directions of the interface on switch ones, traffic expansions can be used to block broadcast bump traffic. And in the inline wheels of switches, you can also configure traffic expansions in VLAN to limit the number of the broadcasts in the VLAN. It means uh, you can use these functions that depends on your situations and uh, your uh, requirement. So let's look at uh, how to configure it. And uh, the config is just uh, simple. So you can just uh, enable uh, the uh, you, first. You need to configure how to uh, calculate the packet. You can calculate it by packet or by base. And uh, then you need to configure the traffic expressions. You can in the VLAN wheel or the interface wheels. In the in the wheels, you need to set a different packet. For example, for the broadcast, for unicast, unicast, and uh, you can set a percent wheel or a CRR wheel. If you know uh, uh, some concept of queues, you will know what is the CRR and what is the CPS. Right, is the commit information rate and uh, the commit blast uh, size. And uh, also, you can use the packets. It means if you uh, surprise mode is the packet, so you need to set it to uh, by packet. And also, you can block it uh, by outbound uh, directions. Also, you can configure all the configurations uh, in the VLAN wheel. Now, let's look at uh, the exam um, for config uh, traffic expressions. We have uh, switches and uh, routers. Uh, uh, beside, in the left, uh, in le in the left uh, of the switch is the layer two network, and uh, in the right uh, part of the router, it is a layer three network. Our requirement is to configure traffic expressions in the wheel of the, this port, gigabit 001, to limit the capabilities of forwarding broadcast, or we can call it bump traffic, to on a layer two network. So what is the values it is, uh, we need to set, okay? We need to send, or we need to uh, surprise, uh, uh, surprisation, we need to surprise, okay, so it's for the bandwidth, bandwidth, of the broadcast traffic, uh, we need to use, we use the percentage, set it to 60 percentage. And uh, for the unknown unicast traffic, we need to set the bandwidth percent for 17. And we need to send the bandwidth percentage for unknown unicast passage packet to 18. Or to send it, first you need to set surprising mode by packet and then set a different percentage for different type of traffic. You can use the command uh, display flow surprisation interface uh, gigabit uh, 001 to check this interface uh, how uh, it's configured. Now let's look at what is storm control. You will find storm control is just uh, like uh, the traffic surprisations. In normal situations, when layer two uh, the uh, as night uh, interface receives the broadcast and no minicast, all this traffic we call it as the buff traffic. It will forward packet to and the layer two as an interface in a similar way as. So we need to uh, reduce it. How to reduce it? We can use the storm control blocks. You will find that it also uh, take effects to bump traffic. What is, how to 
uh, take actions just by disable related interface. You can just uh, find that it is disable related interface. So what is the working mechanism of the storm controls? I don't. I think I don't need to introduce. It is the same with the traffic experience, but just uh, the action is different. Action is block or every down. So that is different. So what is application for storm controls? The same application scenarios of the traffic experience. The different is the action is down. That is the different. You will find that how to command it, uh, configure it. You will find that you need to configure the storm control and uh, you need to configure the traffic type and uh, set the minute rate and the max rate. And uh, the action, you need to set it block or error downs. Interwheel, that means uh, set the storm de dedication interwheels. And uh, also, we have already this command for the second time error dump, auction recovery cause, storm control, and the set in the wheel. What is the meaning of this command? I think I, you have already know it. And uh, also you can set uh, specific uh, protocol packets. For example, the, for those uh, protocol packets, you, they should not be uh, calculated by these functions. So you can set a whitelist. What what so for uh, for this com this protocols, ARB request, BPDU, DHCP, AGMP, OSPF, all of them will not be calculated by these functions. Now let's look at uh, the examples that you will find it is the same topologies. So we just need to do the configurations on the capital zero zero one, And uh, we, ca we can see the requirement. The requirement is the switch is required to prevent broadcast storm caused by broadcast packages and known medical packages and unknown unicast packages for Word on layer two network. So configure root map is config storm control on gigabit zero zero one to prevent broadcast storms on the layer two network. And uh, you will find that as a requirement, it will it does give you specific uh, values about uh, the storm control. So you can just configure it by yourself. So let's look at the example. Uh, so configurations. For example, you need to set uh, the whitelist. Uh, for example, so for this, uh, for these scenarios, the app request should be added to the whitelist. And then in the, in, the, in this interface, you need to set broadcast, minicast, and unicast to a different uh, rate. And uh, you need to set uh, the interview. It means the dedication interview, and uh, set the Action, it is a block. It means it will block this, tra this interface. This interface cannot uh, board the traffic, uh, but it will not be error down. So you will find that uh, we do not uh, configure the error down uh, or discovery cause this command. Okay, we can use this command display storm control interface gigabit. We can use this command uh, to check your configuration result. You can see it. Uh, for this command, uh, recast, broadcast, unicast uh, have already set a different uh, set uh, rate, and the action is blocked. Now let's look at uh, what is the DHCP snooping. First is the working mechanism of DHCP. I think you know that uh, DHCP uses uh, uh, four types of the four types of the packet to obtain address. It is a discovery. It is a uh, Broadcast the traffic of DHCP of packet. It is a unicast packet. Request the packet. It is uh, also broadcast, but it depends on in which stages. In some stages, for example, in DHCP we have the renew and in renew right renew stages. The request will be a uh, unicast, but when the terminal opening the app address for the first time, the request, the uh, request packet is a uh, broadcast. And uh, the last one is uh, sent uh, from the DHCP service. It is a DHCP ACK packet. If, if, the, if we have a DHCP uh, really agent, the packet will be different, but uh, it is still this packet 
uh, discovery of the request and SAK. What are the different things is, what are the different things is, what the different things is the packet will will convert from the uh, broadcast traffic to the unicast traffic. So that is different. Okay, I think it should be very similar about this part. So I don't need to do more interaction about this part. So let's look at what is the DHC misnoping. The DHC misnoping is, is irrelevant to a fair war between DHCP clients and uh, DHCPs to define against the DHCP attacks on network, uh, ensuring security for communication service. Okay. DHCP snooping issues that uh, clients obtain IP address only from authorized uh, service. How to define authorized DHCP service? And a uh, DHCP snooping enabled device record mapping between IP address and MAC address of DHCP clients. Preventing DSP attacks attacks on network. Some attacks are launched based on DSP. These attacks include uh, bogus DSP service attacks, DSP survey DOS attacks, and uh, bogus DSP message attacks. DSP snooping uses the DSP snooping trusted interface and the DSP snooping interface table to issue DSP network securities. So now we have already get some terminologies about. Uh, that is snooping. The first one is a trust interface, and the, another one is the bounding table. So, actually, the, the trust interface and the bounding table is the working example of the DHCP snooping. Now, let's look at some cam, uh, some concept or terminologies about DHCP snooping. The first one is the trust functions. The DHCP snooping trust function issues that DHCP clients opting up the address from authorized DMP service. How to define? Defined by the administrators. For this features, the DHCP or the administrators will configure this interface as the DHCP snooping trusted interface. So for this interface, okay, for trust interface, ACK messages and NSK messages and off messages will be received. It means that this message will be received, but for the untrusted interface, for example, for this interface, this interface connected to an authorized DHCP survey. This we know that for DHCP, it is, for example, the DHCP kind of one it sent a DHCP, uh, but discovery message, uh, the, the the DHCP survey, I mean the real DHCP survey and the unauthorized DHCP, all of them will. Receive, will receive and all of them will reply. Which one to take, which one to use? It depends on the DSP client. Normally, for the DSP client, which packet is received uh, early, it will, it, it will use this, this packet as the DSP service. So how to avoid these things that happened? Just to block the DHCP ACK message or the DHCP off message from an authorized DHCP service. For this part, this part is a DHCP and a DHCP and trust interface. So this interface will drop the offer ACK and NAK. That is the how DHCP trust function works. And that is the DHCP binding table. The layer to access device normally this which enable with the snooping opting requirement inform credit information such as PCs, MAC address, IP address, and uh, address, address release from the DHCP ACK messages really notice. It means in DHCP ACK messages it will include PCs, MAC, IP address, and release. I mean, I mean, I mean the list time. Learning Learns those informations include uh, numbers and relies about DSP Snoopy enable interface. Notice it is DSP enable a uh, Snoopy enable interface it is not a chat the interface. Then it will generate the DSP Snoopy binding entry for PCs. What is the IP entry looks like? It looks like this the tables IP mark VLAN interface and the list. I think this list maybe one day 
normally for Windows terminals or the Windows survey, if, I mean, if the Windows survey function asks the DHCP survey, the least by default it should be one day. The DHCP snooping binding table records the mapping between IP address of the client. The device can check DHCP message again against the DHCP snooping binding table to prevent attacks initiated by authorized users. You will find that for the DHCP snooping trusted interface, it is to prevent and authorize the DHCP survey. But uh, another function, DHCP snooping binding table, it is prevent and authorize the users. But how to prevent attacks initiated by, by uh, authorized the users? Let's look at. The first one is the DHCP starvation attacks. What it means? It means uh, a tanker will apply to the DHCP survey for large numbers of address until the address in the address pool of the survey is exhausted. How do this? It, for example, you can find that the attacker it will keep sending bogus DHCP discovery messages with different source mark address to apply for IP address from the DHCP surveys. You can find that source mark address, it means the frames source mark address. It is continuous changing. And another parameters in the DHCP request header, it means this, uh, it is the client hardware address. It, CH, it means the client. H, it means the hardware. Oh, it should mean the hardware. It means the client hardware MAC address. Actually, it represents the MAC address. You will find that uh, what is the uh, how is the DHCP service to uh, recognize the different uh, DHCP client? Actually, so it uh, looks at, uh, it, it, uh, it will use these parameters as the, I mean, the only uh, definition of the different uh, DHCP client. You will find that this attack, it, all, it is continuously changes the uh, CH address. So for the DHCP survey, it will send DSV, ACK, DSV, ACK to just uh, to allocate IP address to this attack. Term. But uh, what is will happen uh, for this DHCP service, its uh, IP pool will be exhausted. That is, when the real DHCP client try to obtain or try to uh, apply for a bit address, you will find that we can't get it any address just because uh, all the, the IP address in the IP pool have already been used. I mean, in the device, you can see its status. All, every, every IP address in this pool, its status is used, used. So how to define against the DHCP starvation attacks? You will find that attacker try to change its search address and source mark address, but we have we have already said that uh, we can we can configure MAC address limited of the disk moving prevent subvision attacks. This function limited is the mass name of um, address that uh, can be linked on an interface of the switch prevent a large number of this request message with a variable MAC address learning and be sent. And uh, actually we can use the DHCP binding tables. Okay, we can see that. Um, I I will see that part part in when we uh, when we finish this, this this page. Okay, now we let's look at what is the DOS attacks by changing the CHU and fields. I have already uh, explained what is the CHU and ADD field address. It means the current hardware address. Maybe it shall be a child address. An attack continuously applies to the DHCP for a large numbers of drives until the uh, IP address pool is exhausted. But the difference is what? As a result, you will find that DHCP cannot allocate address to authorized users. For renting any size, you will find that when the DHCP survey allocates address to the client, it cannot distinguish authorized and unauthorized users. So, how to? Define. You will find that the, this part, this parameters is always changes 
and uh, we have already said that uh, in the uh, in the DHCP uh, in the tables we see that it will record the MAC address notice it it not changes the source MAC address it changes these parameters it means when this interface received a DHCP request or a discovery or request packet, it will change the request packet in this field, change if this field is crawl to the table's entry. If it is different, the packet will be dropped. So you will find that for the DHCP starvation attacks, for the DHCP uh, DOS attack, all the packet will be dropped just because this parameter will is not equal to the table's record. Now let's look at uh, MITT or MITD uh, attacks. It means in the middle. An attack that uses AIP mechanisms to enable a client to learn the mapping between the DSP services and the attack address. It means the attack will send uh, AIP. Uh, maybe it is a it is a free AIP, okay, or it is a AIP reply to tell the DSP client, I am the gateways, I am IP2, and my IP address, my, my MAC address is MAC2. And then it said another AIP replies or a free AIP to the DSP tell the DSP service, I am IP1, and my MAC address is MAC1. The result is all the traffic uh, between PC1, uh, PC1 and the service will pass through the PC1, PC2. Actually, it is a terrible result. It means the PC2 can monitor all the traffic between the PC1 and the service, and it can modify the traffic. For example, so you can modify the, uh, maybe for example, so the I mean, the, all the data that you post to the service or all the data that the service sent to you. So how to prevent it? Also use the table. We have already said that it has the IP address, it has the MAC address, okay? And uh, the you can use some functions to let the switch to check the IP packet or the frame to check what? To check if the frame source mark and the IPs if it can can just uh, equal to these tables. If it doesn't, the job, the packets will be dropped. So you will find that the main the medium media will be dropped. Why? Just because for these switches it have already formed the DHCP snooping record table. PC1 mark is PC uh, IP1's mark is mark one IP2's mark is mark two. The switches have already recorded. But what is the uh, checking mechanism? It is not the DSP. So what is this? I will introduce in the next page. I mean in the next uh, chapter. It is the IP source guard. Now let's look at uh, the conversations about the DSP snooping. The first one is uh, enable DSP sloping. We can enable these functions for IPv4 and IPv6. And then you can enable these functions inside the VLAN wheel. And then you need to cite the interface that are connected to the real DSP survey to DSP trust interface. And then you need to enable the interface that are connected to the client remember but you need to notice that all the interface i mean the interface connected to the client or the interface connected to the survey all the interface needed to be enabled to these functions but for the i mean for the dhcp survey the, the interface connected to the survey you need to uh you need to add a uh, extraordinary command it is that it's been snooping trusted trust and uh, if you wanted to use the dhcp uh, snooping to provide some fun some some network detector you need to use this command dhcp snooping check 
tcp GIDDR value, you can use this command. Okay, now let's look at uh, the examples for configuration DSP snooping. The for, the, in these topologies, we have a switcher and we have DSP survey. For the switchers, we have this, com this interface, in, in, three interfaces. For this interface, it connected to uh, uh, connector one, this is connected to connector two. We needed to deploy a uh, basic DSP snooping. So what do we need to do? The first uh, config method, method is uh, by using interface wheel. We need to enable this snooping wheel first, uh, and then we need to set this interface this, and this interface uh, to DHCP snooping enable interface. And uh, for this interface, we need to, we need to enable DHCP snooping function and uh, set it to DHCP snooping trusted interface. For this interface, we need, we, we need to set it to DSP snooping. And uh, the second method is the VLAN wheel. Inside the VLAN tool, we need to enable DSP snooping functions. And uh, besides, for this, for this interface, we need to set it to DSP snooping trusted. We can use this command, DHCP display DSP snooping interface gigabit and uh, followed by the interface number to check the interface, uh, the conclusions about this interface, the so DSP snooping function. Now let's look at what is FC card. I've already mentioned it before. How to check this if this packet is, uh, is legal or illegal uh, 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 from this, uh, that inside, uh, that into this part, this, uh, this, uh, this interface. Okay, we can see that some attacks the fog uh, IP address of authorized users to obtain network access right and access networks. As a result, authorized users are unable to access network or sensitive information may be intercepted. IP source card, IPSG functions provides a mechanism to efficiently define against the IP address spoofing attacks. IPSG is a layer two interface based uh, source IP address uh, filtering technologies. It provides uh, an authorized host from using IP address of authorized host or specific address to access or attack the network. Now you can find that we have the three, we have three pieces. They have different IP address. We authorize the host one and two can access the internet, but they are shut down. And the IP address of the authorized host is this 10.1.1.1.10. And the host cannot access the internet. After the interface, the IP address is changed to 10.1.1, the host can access the internet. That is the requirement. We can configure the RPSG on the use side interface or with on the switch. But uh, how RPS is check it, we can look at, look at. You will find that the RPSG has a table and this table is uh, similar with the DCP snooping record table. IP, MAC, WLAN interface, they are the same. So what is the RPSG's function do? It will check all the parameters. It will, for example, for these switches, it received a packet the packet have the IP, have a VLAN, have the IP address, and uh, this packet is inside this switch by some port. So you can find that now we have four parameters. We need, just need to, to check why the, the four parameters is equal to this entrance. If, if any parameters is not equal, the switches will drop the packet. So you will find that if the fog, I uh, mean, the authorized host try to access the network, what will happen? To, Source IP is right. Source VLAN is right. Source MAC can be changed, right? You can use some, use some software words to change the source MAC address, but the interface is not correct, so it will be dropped. That is what RPSG does. Check if all the parameters is right. If not, it is not right, it will be dropped. Now let's look at what is the application of the MSG. IPSG prevents PC from changing their own IP address. PCs can only use the IP address allocated by the DSP survey or 
they take IP address configured by an administrator to access the network. If a PC changes its IP address without permission, the PC cannot access the network. It means that even though you change the PC from one port to another port, your access will fail, right? If IP address on a small secure network are statistically allocated, IPSG can be used to provide and authorize the PCs from existing networks. User cannot access the internet with their own computers. This provides internet source details. Let's look at how to configure. Just try to imagine what parameters we need, what we will need to check, check uh, we need to check, you will find that. The IPS, RPSG, you need to configure your standing state tape uh, entries. It can include IP address, MAC address, interface, and VLANs, right? And you need, and then you need to enable IPS functions inside the interface. Use this command, IP source check, use it, find it enable, and what function to enable after, after the IP source check uh, failure. Maybe it is alarm, and also you can set alarm through uh, numbers for IP packet checks. After this alarm function is configured, the switch generates alarms if the number of this kind of packet exceeds the, the uh, switches. Oh, and uh, now let's look at uh, the example for configuration IPSG. We have the switch one. And we have two, we have the IP address and the MAC address. As still in the figures, PCs are configured with static IP address for unified management. RPSG is configured on the access switch to prevent hosts from changing their own IP address to access the network. Config the aesthetic blending table. It means in this, in this, in this part and in this part, you need to configure the static uh, binding interest and uh, you need to enable IPSG and uh, configure the alarm function. So the first one, we needed to uh, configure two binding entries for the PC1 and the PC2. And then we needed to, we need to configure, we need to configure inside the interface wheel. We need to enable the checker and uh, we, need to en we need to enable the check alarm and uh, we need to set the alarm thresholds, right? But you will find that what things we doesn't configure. It is the VLAN and uh, interface. What it means? It means for the two entries, it, it will not check the VLAN and interface. You will find that, right? The interface and the VLAN is not configured. So for they, for the two entries, the IPSG function will not uh, uh, check if the interface and the VLAN is right. Now let's look at what is the hot standby and uh, what is which uh, systems. It is about advanced firewall features and uh, it is just a brief introduction that let you know what is the hot standby and what is which system. The first is the Hot standby. Why we need hot standby? It's just because we will have a problem if we uh, we deploy the I mean the redundancy mode about the firewall. You can you can see that the two firewalls run independently and need to be configured and meetings separately. Multiple WRP groups are dependent for each other, and what will happen? Uh, Normally we will find that we will, normally we will do that. Uh, for example, for this we are for this we are P group, uh, this port uh, fill FW, I mean fill wall one is port uh, is active. But uh, for this we are P group, uh, this import is this interface is the we are P active uh, active interface. So what we have in them? We will find that if if the internet, uh, maybe it is a U it terminal, send the traffic uh, to the external network, the traffic uh, will send, uh, it will be received by the P or FW1 uh, at first. And uh, the session, we, we all know that for the firewall, it will forward the traffic followed by the station table. 
and the second table will be generated by the first packet. What is the first packet? For example, for the TCP, the first packet, TCP as one is the first packet. For the SMP, the SMP request is the first packet. Only the first packet can trigger the generation of the second table. So only the this one, the this uh firewall will have the session table. And then the external network will reply the packet. But we know that we have already said that if firewall will uh forward the traffic followed by system, but now for this for flow, we should know that uh, the uh or the B direction they uh belongs to the same flow. But for this flow, the FW2 try to find a matching match the session, but it fails. Why? Because the first packet don't doesn't pass through it, so it doesn't have the ability to generate the session. So that is problem. So what is the hot standby? For the hot standby, the hot standby request through firewalls was the same hardware and the software configured to form our standby system. And then the stuff the firewall are connected through an independent link. This link we call it the head bit link. To learn about the health status and each other's and backup configurations and entries. If a firewall fails, service traffic can be smoothly switched to other firewalls. Why? Just because by this by this uh, by this uh, link we can uh synchronize session entry and episode address why we will find that why this fail work just in this uh topology so in this analysis, why this fail work cannot uh, traffic uh, cannot afford the traffic just because it doesn't have a session it, if it has a session it has the ability to forward the reply packet to this internet network right but uh, you should notice that uh, you, if you deploy the hrp the WinRP status will be uh, will be will be uh, will be taken over by the HRP, which it means it means for HRP if this this a if 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 this the HRP active or the uh, master device, you can just think uh, if it, this is the HRP active device, all the WinRP group on this device will be active and. Uh, what is, uh, and uh, if this part, this firewall is the HRP, the slavery or the standby, standby firewall, all the VIP groups on this device will be standby. And uh, the session group, the, the firewall session table will be synchronized from the active uh, device to the backup standby tables. If this firewall failures, uh, fails and uh, the traffic, uh, all the VIP uh, uh, group uh, or all the VIP groups, uh, all the interface will come to active status and uh, cause now it has the session so it can traffic forward the traffic normally. That is uh, what a traffic. What is the <coughs> key components of the HRP? The first one is uh, VRP. We have already seen that, and uh, I think you should know that what is VRP. What is, but uh, the difference is uh, HRP will use the VRP to management uh, the VRP status. It can control the VRP status. It can set all VRP groups have the same active uh, port, uh, have, uh, uh, has the same active in the same device. And then it is HRP. HRP can control the VRP, VGMP, and can synchronize, for example, the uh, session table. So let's look at uh, the VRP and VGMP. VRP is used to manage, VGMP is used to manage VRP groups in Unified Manager. The status of the VGMP group determines the status of the all VRP members interface. And uh, the VGMP group, uh, Status will be managed by HRP if you use the HRP function. And when the status of the VGMP groups changes, the status of all VRP member interface in the VGMP groups is uh, phobic, uh, phobically 
isotropically changed. It means if the VRP, for example, so this part is dense, all the VRP must will change it to this this interface. Consistent status issues that the incoming and outgoing survey traffic is falling along the same path. It means all the traffic will be, I mean, the outbound and the inbound traffic will be forward by the same device. And uh, what a, another uh, key component of the field work is done by XHRP and uh, what link to issue successful switch over work. Key configurations, commanders, and status information must be synchronized between the active and standby. <coughs> sorry. And the standby field works. Configurations that be backed up as the follows the policy object network system. For example, so for the field works, it has the security policies, net policies, and net service, all the policies will be synchronized. Objectives, it means all the objectives that you can use to configure the net policy or the security policies. For example, so just reaching survey application and user. And uh, for the network, the network security zones, the DNS, HSEC, and SSOP can also be synchronized. Also, for other configurations, for example, so about the administrators, which systems, all of this can be configured uh, synchronized. But, uh, and uh, other status information, for example, so actually, so I think. Uh, only one thing you need to remember is the syntables. Other things, when you use it, you will remember it. For example, so if now I if I try to uh, explain why we need to uh, back up the AppSec information, so you need to know what is the AppSec SA. So in that case, you the, the most important things is the syntables and try to remember it. Syntable is the most important when you try to use HIV configurations. Now let's look at uh, typical network uh, scenarios of the field work and by. The first one is deployed in the inline mode. It means the field work uh, to function as a level two for device. This service interface of the field works at a level three and connected to switches in upstream and downstream interface all. So it is the this inline it mean it not means in the uh, level two it means uh, inline mode. The default gateway of the terminal can be set uh, to the which IP address of the VIP group. Once configurations of the the return route on the switch three and switch four, you can set the next hop to the which IP address of the VID. It means for this. VIP group, uh, you can you you can use the to face the to switch three and switch two with an if, and uh, for this which VIP group, you can use it as the terminal gateways. And now it now and then it is the hot standby deployed in inline mode and connects it to layer of three device. It means the service interface, uh, and uh, the upstream and downstream directions are will will run the OSPF protocols. And uh, how to it works now, we don't have the VRP. So how HRP works to issue all the traffic will uh, go through uh, the same device. It can it will change the OSPF cost. It means you will find that R1, R3, okay. R1 will send the traffic to R3 followed by the OSPF router set. All for the R3, the, it is the same. So, but what is, but you will find that the router that uh, generated by R1 and the decision is R3 will, 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 uh, will through the FW1. And uh, for this path, it is the same. So the only thing that HRP needed to do is to keep this cost and this cost, I mean the OSPF interface cost is less than this. For example, you can see that uh, uh, this is this. And uh, what, uh, and uh, for example, the, the cost of the root is bad. And 
for this one, maybe it is this. So what is the result? The result is all the traffic will go through by FW1. I mean the traffic from R1 to R3 and the traffic from R3 to R1, all the traffic will pass through FW1. If the FW failures, okay, the FW2 will change the OSW cost to this and uh, for R4 and R2, it, it will select this path as the optimal path. And then let's look at which is which system. Which system is, is you can think it is just like VM. You will need that for the PC, you can use the uh, which, uh, VM workstation or which post to simulate so many which machines. And for the firewall, you can do the same things. And uh, with the which firewall you can allocate to different apartment. So for different apartment department, they will have the different firewalls and maybe they can use the same IP address gateway, right? So this, the first uh, scenario is a network isolation for large and mid-sized enterprise. It means for different department, they have different uh, uh, fail walls and uh, so they can't communicate with each others and uh, the security limit limitation can be finished just inside the logical fail wall. And uh, another way is the another scenario is the security gateway for cloud computing centers. That is will be more complicated as if you know what is the DC network or you know what is the cloud network, you will, you will know that. This tenant, that means they are different customers. You should know that you have a which machine on the cloud and other people have also have a which machine on the cloud. You have, maybe you have the different subnet, but, and, and you have the different subnet and you have the same, you have the same uh, fail wall. How to achieve this? Just use the, which systems you have the different which systems it means you can use the different you can use the same subnet that okay just because they are logical and you should know that all the logical just like the which which machine which which machine they are logical so they are isolated so you can use the different uh, system system you different uh, the uh, IP address it is okay so let's look at what is the which system the which system of the field were classified into two types the first type is the public and the another type is the which system we call it WSIS and for the public system we call it public actually specific uh, the packet label will exist by default. It means all the configurations if you do to a firewall is on the public with this. And uh, what is the which system and firewall utilizations? If you know what is which machine, you will know that. Uh, actually, it's the which system is, is the which firewall, right? And uh, what is it's the basic? It basically is, is the Virtualization technologies, right? What and which what things can be virtualization? Uh, for example, the, the station, the station uh, quarter, the uh, the memory quarters quarter, the C, uh, CPU quarters and interface can be virtualization. Now let's look at what is the which interface, which system communication with each other through which interface? What it is? It it, it is. All the virtual system will have a logical interface. This interface name is the virtual interface. And uh, all the virtual interface are in the same subnet. Or you can think they are, no, no, no. They are not in the same subnet. They are in the same broadcast to me. So if you configure this interface and this interface and this interface uh, with, uh, with IPS that are in the same subnet, they can communication with each other. So, how the communication with the different subnet, you shall know that. They have the IP address in the same subnet. You can just use the static routers to achieve uh, communication dif between different uh, 
uh, virtual system. Okay, virtual interface, uh, logical interface used uh, for inter virtual systems communication after virtual system is created. The device automatically create a virtual interface for virtual systems. A virtual interface can work properly only after it is assigned an empty address and added to a security zone inside. A virtual interface can work properly only after it is assigned an IP address and added to a security zone. Virtual interface can are named in the format of the which IP and the interface numbers, and the interface numbers is called to the VCS number, and it is, it is generated by automatically. Okay. Now, now let's look at uh, how the how the which system the communication with each other. So, oh, we have already seen that uh, the which interface they have the same uh, they have the interface in to in the same subnet. Use on the, the network segment uh, ten dot three dot zero dot zero and with a mask of the twenty four. It is connected to the virtual system A access and uh, and uh, a survey access it, and it wanted to access the survey uh, three dot three dot three dot three and with a mask uh, uh, twenty four and uh, this survey is accessed to the gigabit uh, uh, one zero zero and uh, what is the routing table looks like. First, you will find. Uh, first, you will find that. Uh, first, uh, for the routing tables for the which system A, it will have. Uh, it will have a, a destination router table. We will find that. We uh, will find that. Uh, first, it need, need to uh, routers that uh, forward to the source. It should have this. Root address, and then it has the root address. You will find that it is a default router, and its autobahn interface is which one? Its autobahn interface is the public systems. It means we can use the autobahn interface as the next hop, and without the next hop, that it is just like the point to point, point to point, point link. But maybe you will be confused. It is not the Point to point link just because you have the which if one, which if zero, which if two, which if three, it is not a, a point to point link. But why you can configure the thick route like this? I will can I will explain in the next page. And you will find that for the public system router, it will only have a default router, right? And the next hop is one dot one dot one two hundred fifty four, and it only have a router to the destinations. For this public system, it don't have a, a router to the source. How the public system just uh, forward the reply packet from the destination? How maybe you will have the confused? Yeah, yes. How to how it uh, how it uh, achieve this? I will tell you. For this public system, when you when it received the the first packet, notice is the first packet, first packet. I think you should remember that for the fair war, all the fair war, uh, no matter the physical fair war or the logical fair war. The first packet will generate the session, and in the session it will record the inbound interface. But if you try to see the Huawei's firewall sessions, you will you will you will do not find which 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 system it comes. But actually, the device it knows the device by the session it knows which which systems it comes from, which system A. So you should know that why we can 
say we can uh, configure the C to as uh, this, and why for this public system, we this we don't need to configure the the router that the designated for the source just because for the firewall when itself can uh, generate or create the session, it will record which the packet comes from. So by the session, we know that. But by we know that for the firewall, when the when it forward the reply packet, it will follow the, the session table. And in the session table, it have already recorded which the packet comes from. So you can not configure the, this route. So now you shall know that for the deep communications between two voices, how they will consist. For this, for example, so if the if it if source want to communicate with station, you only need to configure the the this uh, this onto this. You will find that for the way to this which this B, you don't need to configure the router that designated for this. But if you want to try to, but if you want to try to let the 3.3.3 .3 .3 to other source to communication with this, you need to configure this, right? But for it, for it, for which system A, the this route is not necessary. Okay, now let's look at uh, the the communication. Let's look at uh, the example for the configuration communication between which system. Okay, we have the firewall, one firewall, and we have two logical firewall. It is VCS A and VCS B. And uh, now we have uh, we have the trusted zones, and then uh, this is trusted zones, and this is also trusted zones. So we have different subnet. And uh, First thing we is you can find that in the public notice it is in the public firewall. We can configure static router like this, source with this, and uh, destination with this. You can configure static router. But uh, if you want to enter the VCS and configure the the static router, it is uh, take the same uh, function. So this depends on you. And then notice that uh, the which if will only take effect after you configure its IP address and add it into the zone. So we need to configure the IP address and uh, add it to the zones. And uh, for the which if one, it means for the which is B, you need to do the same things. And also for any field what you need to configure the security policies in uh, you can you can find that uh, for this, it is uh, you will find that uh, in th this interface, uh, it is trust, and uh, in this uh, field wall, notice that uh, in this field wall, which is A, this is trust interface, and with this interface, uh, which means if one, it is uh, added uh, to untrust. So this for which is A, the traffic is come from trust to untrust. But also for with this B, it is the same. The traffic is comes from coming from the trust and uh, out from the uh, trust. And uh, you need to set the source zone and the destination source address and uh, destination address and send action to permit. And uh, for the with this B, you will find that uh, right set interface to untrust and set the security policy, and then. You will find you will find that now live on the PC, ping the survey, notice the distant address. Now you can finish the ping. But now, if I ask questions, now if ten dot three dot one dot three can communication with the PC, the answer is no. Why? Just because we own now only in the VCS A have the router to but VCS B don't have the router to it. That is why. Okay, now let's uh, see the quiz of the question uh, lessons. The first one is DHCP snooping is the DHCP security features. Which of the following attacks on can DHCP snooping define? 
against them. Okay, the first one, starvation attacks by changing uh, CHA address field. Okay, it can. We have already introduced it in our uh, slide. Because uh, THCP survey attacks, yes, it can. TCP flex, no, it can. Main middles, yes, it can. So the answer should be A, B, D. And uh, then the next uh, question is on a firewall, which systems are isolated by default? How the indifferent uh, which system cannot? It is, if it is by default, yes, by default, how the indifferent which system cannot? But we can choose this, so it is true. Okay, now let's do a summary. Port isolations can isolate the interface in a VLAN. Two port isolation modes are available layer two and uh, all. Right, layer two and all. Magnitude entries of the switches are classified into a static backbone and uh, backbone and uh, dynamic magnitude entries. Port security enable a switch to convert dynamic magnitude learned by our interface into a security magnitude. Security magnitude address are used, uh, are used usually to use that together with the security protection actions. Enable in MacDress flapping detections on a switch helps engineers quickly troubleshooting loops on the switch. MacSec defines a method for a security data communication based on Ethernet and uh, issuing data transmission security through hope by hope uh, data equipment between devices. Uh, the difference between traffic spreading and storm control is that traffic spreading only limited the rate of the virus packet and discard it. Uh, excise packet server. When well, uh, the storm can choose take a different actions, it will shut down or block the interface. DHCP snooping plays an important role in preventing network attack on terminal that automatically the opening IP address on the interface as night. You can configure the DHCP snooping in trusted interface and just binding table to prevent DHCP based network attacks. And also Sometimes we will use the IPSG with the DHCP snooping. Use the DHCP snooping the uh, record table to us to to uh, function as a spawning table, and uh, we can use the firewall to uh, work in hot standby mode to improve network abilities and deploy firewall which is can logically divide physical devices to inform source utilizations. Okay. That is all lessons for today. So we will have our lessons in next day. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much.